Hello and welcome to The Review, the podcast where we sit down with your favorite Kendama players over a cup of coffee and dive deep into the game we all love, because Kendama is more than just a ball in a cup. I'm your host, Adam, and today I am joined by Kendama legend, Zach Yord. Yord is a baking icon, a mountaineer, and my calendar for interesting national days, and as well, a dang good Kendama player with a love for coffee. And he has shaped much of the modern generation of Kendama play from POV at five and backwards and his trips in Japan and everything that he's done with Kusa and for the scene. So I'm really excited to dive into his narrative, his story and what he's been up to in the past couple of years because he's been a little quiet on the Kendama side of things. So I wanna dive into that with him today. And tonight's gonna to be a little bit different. Tonight, we aren't drinking coffee because guys, it is 6 p.m. my time. I can't have coffee at this hour. So Yord convinced me we should get some alcoholic beverages, some adult drinks and share those tonight. And so we'll chat about those in a hot minute. But before we do, I wanna remind you guys of our generous supporter over here at The Review and that is Onyx Coffee Lab. Onyx Coffee Lab is an Arkansas based roaster who um, I absolutely love. They're a fantastic coffee roaster that puts sustainability, ethics and quality first in everything they do. You guys know it. I've been talking about it for a long time. They build farmer first relationships. They pay fairly and share openly their wages for all their staff and down to the cost of their beans of what they pay. And they make really good coffee. Highly recommend you go check them out. You can head to onyxcoffeelab.com. You can subscribe for monthly deliveries, all that good stuff. And you can save some cash and support the review by using code brewview10. And that's at onyxcoffeelab.com. It'll be in the show notes down below as well. So guys, with all that said, Let's dive into this week's review and let's get Zach on here and let's have a good one tonight. We'll get him on here in a quick second. Zach. Yo. <laughs> welcome to the review. Dude, this, I was literally just kind of freaking out because we're, I'm, here in, I'm here in Denver, Colorado and you're talking this intro and we never get too much rain. We're normally always in a drought and it's literally raining sideways out here and lightninging, which reminds me just like the days of growing up in Pittsburgh where it was like monsoons every day. But dear Lord, this is a storm. So I'm, I'm glad to be inside and, you know. <laughs> Fingers crossed you don't get shot by lightning and we lose this episode because I'm sick and tired of losing episodes. <laughs> Dude, I feel like you've just been getting robbed with just with Juicy Joker. And well, just, oh. It's been a journey. I talked about it on last week's episode that I recorded with James. And the irony is, even though we switched to Zoom, my internet cut out twice during that interview, but I still have saved it. Uh, and so I just need to edit it. It's going to be going live, hopefully by the end of this week. I'm just like, I've been just sweating for the past couple of weeks of doing this thing. Dude, I, I, I know what you mean. The Zoom life is hard. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a high school teacher. So basically when, when, when shit hit the fan with the, with the pandemic, it was like, cool, take your classroom and put it in Zoom and good luck. And it's like, so <laughs> I know the frustrations of Zoom and just Google yeah. Meet and all that, that grind. So we'll be, it can okay. be a pain in the butt. I, I, like, I didn't know that you're a high school teacher. I actually, that, that's something I had no, like, no idea about. I, isn't that wild? I know sometimes I'm like, wait, I feel like I'm more immature and just like stupid than them. But like, <laughs> dude, you'd be the coolest high school teacher ever. You climb mountains, you bake stuff, you're a big ski bum, you, uh, you play kendama. Like, what, what else would you want of a high school teacher? <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that. We, uh, every Monday, like after the weekend, I come back from the mountains and we're sitting in class. We always, before we start class, we do like a, a pastry of the week. So I'll show them like, I'll show them the mountain I was on and some photo highlights on the smart board. And then they'll have to try to guess what the pastry is. They'll play 20 questions with me to try to figure it out. And every time they get it, I'll throw like an extra bonus question on their test for that unit. <laughs> and dude, it's, it, it's fun. So they're like, is they, the they bonus know, like, question about the pastry? Oh no. It's, it's like a bonus <laughs> math question, but like these kids are so hungry for just like more points. Give us more points. Especially my own, my honors kids are like way into it. Like, I will, if I'm not above a hundred percent, what am I doing? It's like, <laughs> I, I was never right. that kid. I was like as little work as I can do to get as good of a percentage as I can with the least amount of effort in. That was always what I wanted. I never wanted to put more effort in. Like I was always like a time in for time, like output. I'd always weigh that out. And it's like, for me to get an extra 1%, I'd have to put in another hour and that's not worth it for me. But if I could do it in like five minutes to get another percent, I'd do it. But but I was always so like equating your, so, all my activities down to like time in. 
so what you're saying is like, all right, another five minutes, can I get, you know, can I bump my grade up? Meaning, can I write formulas on my fingernails with pencil and use that? Yeah. <laughs> Are you, you were cheating in high school, weren't you? No, yeah, I wasn't I a cheater. I was lazy. <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't hand in a lot of homework because I was like, uh, this assignment's like not worth much. So I'm not going to wow. do it because it's going to take me four hours to do this thing. That's only going to change my mark by 0.5%. I don't care. I mean, that's how, that's how it was, though. It was like my mentality was I can take the regular path, no honors classes, no nothing, get a 4.0. Because I, I didn't, I was always pretty good at school. And that's what I did. Whereas if I would have taken honors classes, cool, I might have gotten like B's or whatever and brought down that GPA, man. Yeah, that GPA could be a killer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was the same in college too. Like in college when I, I, I was like the student that I would never study for tests. I always had the philosophy that like if I, if I paid enough attention in the hour that I was in that class, I shouldn't yeah. need to put in a lot of extra effort to study and do well on an exam. That was always my like philosophy. And I did pretty well in my last couple of years. Like I was a almost 4.0 student uh, yeah. in my last two years. And I maybe put in for every exam that I did, maybe at tops an hour of studying. And that was just because I like was very determined during class to not waste my money. Cause I, I like did the math. I was like, I'm sitting, every time I'm sitting in this chair, I'm spending $45 per class. And I'm, and I'm like, I ain't letting that go to waste. I'm a money. Like for me, it's like, if, if I'm paying money, I will put the time and energy in. Oh my God. Breaking it down like that is so I scary. Did. Cause college, dude, I'm in debt. I'm a student debt for no. eons. <laughs> Me too. Really hoping that's Onyx partnership flies through the roof. Dude, Onyx. I was, uh, I'm going to buy their stuff mainly because obviously the packaging is great and all of that. And I, I like what they're doing, but they have a race called geometry and I'm yeah. just like, dude, dude, come on. Like, get out of here. So, I, yeah. I just tried. I just had that one this past weekend. It's pretty good. It's one of their more basic roasts. So it's not like anything like super acidic or super fruity. It's not like, it wouldn't be the one that I'd go back and buy over and over and over again. Cause I really like those like African fruity ones that kind of kick you in the face, but geometry is super solid, super solid. Definitely recommend. Yeah. I mean, I know we have beers to crack, but about coffee, like, yeah, I mean, I've been, um, I know your AeroPress, your AeroPress guy. I, I do. I do. I do a lot of different ones, but AeroPress is the go-to. I mean, are you, are you like me where like you pick up a bag and of beans and you're just like, all right, every day for the next week, I'm going to try a different method of brewing this just to see where it pops. You know what? I should be because that's a way better way of like finding out, but I'm kind of lazy. I have changed up my AeroPress recipe every now and then, and I do Chemex every now and then, and I'll do an ice Chemex. Okay. Those are kind of like the, the few things I do do. And on the rare occasion, I'll you make do. a mocha pot. <laughs> Sorry. That, that's like right. the rare occasion yeah i mean you know because they see like uh, like whatever preferred brewing method and they'll list something like chemex or whatever and to me it's like especially when i'm on summer break i'm like cool i have time to like make coffee mm -hmm. as long of a process as it needs to be like let's let's do this I, I like doing that on my like holidays or on my vacations if I'm oh, yeah. if I'm not like working. So I don't like to throw off my rhythms. I love when things are standardized in my life. So for me, it's like I make the same method of coffee every morning before work or whatever it is that I do because it's like a habit for me. But on a vacation, right. that's when I'll mix it up and I'll say, oh, this is time for me to explore and do something different or try something yeah. new. And so that's when I'll do like, I don't know, I'll... I'll try whatever, but I'll do anything. I'll try a new AeroPress recipe or I'll do a new way of doing Chemex or something like that. And I'll mix it up then. But for me, I'm such a habit oriented person that I have to do it the same way. Otherwise it like ruins my day. I'll be like, oh, I should have done it the <laughs> other way or it'll like get in my head or something. I don't know. Like it's not that I'm thinking about it consciously. It just like subconsciously throws me for a loop that day. I mean, yeah, you sound like me. We're a little bit OCD in our ways and just like, it's good. That means like you're probably so dialed <laughs> at the method that is like your go-to so I mean that's your home yeah well I am except when I mess it up and then that also like throws me for a loop because sometimes it's like you're so tired in the morning you're brewing and you forget to turn your scale on and you're like ah frick I didn't weigh this out <laughs> and you just like eyeball it after that and you're like ah it's not perfect and then you start like beating yourself up for it. like I'm such an idiot I've been doing this every day for 128 days in a row <laughs> now I mess it up <laughs> but okay oh, maybe 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 like you should do like, you know how sweets does like 28 tricks later. Oh, dude, maybe you need to do like whatever. Take the next, like do the longest month and like 31 brew later or something. And that's then just like, 
I don't know, <laughs> something like that. I kind of like that idea. Maybe or, or, or next February, like I never participate in 28 Tricks Later because I find it so self-defeating for me because I make it like seven days in. I, I, I don't even know if I've ever made it past a week. <laughs> I get so busy in my evenings and stuff. I like never have the time to record. Uh, and kudos to the dudes who make it through that no though. like what a grind <laughs> big respect to them big respect yeah i can't do it i've tried like three years and i think i end up like deleting my first couple days because i'm like i don't <laughs> want people to think that i started this <laughs> oh my god but okay uh, that's it uh we i always ask a couple warm-up questions and i, I don't want to get too far ahead and i know I'm, I'm gonna get parched real soon so i gotta crack open this drink that i got here dude so, let's let's get it going yeah yeah let's let's talk about what we're drinking today uh what are you drinking I want to know that first okay. and then I'll tell you what I'm drinking. So I have my wedding coming up in a couple of days. So like we have a bunch of family over and stuff. And right now, because like our families are all over, I'm actually in my neighbor's house who are out of town recording this. So I had to keep to keep my beers cold. I brought over my uh, my little Munchmate Plus. I don't know if anybody's familiar with, you know, the classic Igloo cooler, but I got my Igloo cooler here and we have... You might have heard of them. Modern Times? I've never heard of them. Where are they from? It's, um, I believe they're from San Diego. Yeah, they're from San Diego. It's their vanilla latte sort of stout. Um, so it's got really smooth body, a lot of okay. roasty notes in there, a lot of vanilla. Um, what about you? Have, have you tried that beer before? Um, I have, yeah. Okay, okay. So you know it's good. So, okay, I, I'm, I need to apologize first off. <laughs> wait, wait, so you know it's good. And then you're like, wait, so what I have, I'm not really sure what this is. What you got? <laughs> uh, so apologies. I went to the liquor store yesterday and I totally forgot to get uh, a coffee stout uh, or a porter or whatever. So out I get, season, dude. It's all I good. know, right? It's not in season. And so then I like, after work today, I almost like was delayed and getting on here doing this. I was almost late for everything. I was like, I need to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I like boogied over to the liquor store. That's like a couple blocks from my house. And I went in there and I'm like scouring around. I can't find anything that's like coffee. So I like go over to the manager and he's like, Oh, I swear we have something. And, and we start looking around. He's got this one six pack of gluten-free coffee stouts or whatever. And okay. they're like, it's like $27 for a six pack. And I'm like, I am not paying that for this, not for no, gluten-free no. beer. And so, no, 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 no. so I ended up bailing and I got a chocolate porter instead from Longboat. Hey, there we so, go. Uh, it's from it's, a, it's called the Longboat, but it's from Phillips Brewing and Malting Co. It's from Victoria, BC, uh, or St. Victoria. I've never tried it, it, so I'm going to give already, it a little rip here. Did you already open it? Oh, sorry, I, I opened sorry, it, sorry. and I, I poured it into my good old sweets, sweets mug. You got to have proper glassware. Exactly. Got yeah, it. Hold on. I, I did a really bad pour because I was kind of staring at you, so let's, uh, let's get this guy topped up a bit more. I mean, I get it. You you have a man crush on me. I'm in wedding season. I'm in wedding shape. I know looking you're good, a, looking you're tan. an unattainable <laughs> man now. <laughs> I'm not yet. I still got like three days yeah. to potentially screw things up. But. You know what they say? The just because there's a goalie. <laughs> no, wait, it's a no, hockey wait. reference. That's a it's a hockey reference to say just because there's a goalie doesn't mean he can't score. So you never heard this well, one? Maybe this is a Canadian I mean, saying. I think so. I mean, I was a big sports guy, still am, but hockey was one I never tapped into. And I was just talking to a friend about this just because it was it was money. And I had like too many different branches going oh, off into sports. And I was so like, much I money. Pick up hockey. The yeah, kids that play cheers. hockey. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Oh, Boom. I, I spilled some money. Yo, shout out to the brewery I used to brew at when I was living in Pittsburgh, Hitchhiker. Little plug for them. They're good. But yo. This isn't bad. It's pretty yeah. chocolatey. Way more chocolatey than I thought on. it would be. It's almost a little too sweet for me, but it's not bad. I like it. I can dig it. Mm. All right. Okay. So we know what we're drinking, but I like to ask two other questions before we really get into the meat of conversation. I know you've yeah. listened to some episodes of the review, so I'm hoping that maybe you have your answers ready. Maybe not. Who knows? We'll find out. Oh, but shit. If... No, <laughs> I, I know what you can ask me, too. All right. All right. All right. Uh, if you could teach any one person their first spike, uh, past or present, live or dead, doesn't matter, uh, who would it be? Um, I would say I, I like just because I like his like the way he sees things and the way he produces cinema is uh Wes Anderson the director 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, name, name me like two or three films of his. I'm trying to think of. Yeah, so like some of my favorites are Fantastic Mr. Yeah, Fox. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I was thinking Grand of. Grand Budapest Hotel, Isle for Dogs. I mean, it, it, it goes on. Yeah, he and does such unique like films. It's a lot of just like panning over. Like literally he would like some of his scenes, he has it set up or he's in camera. And it's just like he's stationary going around and it hits like five different ro- It's Watch yeah. any Wes Anderson movie and you'll just be amazed. That's cool. Um, and so you think you think he'd be a ball and kendama influencer, or, or what, what would oh, be the, hell, the reason for hell teaching? No, but, hell no, but I think like just to see it in because he he focuses on detail so much. Just so just for me, my own satisfaction to like see it in his movies as just like little props in the corner or whatever it would be mm. would make would make my day. I would find that amazing. It's like when you watch like an HBO movie or something or whatever and it's in there it's like oh fuck i know what that is like i know that no thing. one else yeah, <laughs> no one else in there. Else what, what are you freaking out about that's like yeah. uh um but actually uh there yeah, there's a uh, a podcaster uh he's he's really big uh theo theo vaughn uh isaac uh, from lotus kendama sent him a kendama and i think occasionally like it pops up in the background of their podcast episodes he's like a massive podcaster he's got like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of listeners and there's just a kendama chilling in the back and it's like a lotus kendama from isaac because apparently he's like a big listener and i'm like that's that, sick that's super sick I does mean, he play i don't know like, right like joe rogan would be a good one you could throw mm-hmm. joe rogan on the list like get that man a kendama he might think it's the next like whatever thing that he gets hooked on or even um oh all right here's one because i was thinking you know woodworkers what about like a fictional character like uh ron swanson Ooh, I don't. I don't think he'd have time for it. He'd like pull it up once and be like, "This thing's stupid." <laughs> no, but for like for comedic values, and then like you go to his wood shop, which is like not up to code at all. If you've ever seen that episode, and he just yeah. has kendamas everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I love Ron Swanson so much. I yeah, our yeah no Ron Swanson. I'm thinking Parks and Rec, right? That's who we're talking. Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick okay. Hoffman. I was thinking for a second. I was thinking, uh, um, <laughs> what's his name uh, from Will Ferrell's character in Anchorman? What's his name? Ron, Ron Burgundy. Burgundy. Oh, Burgundy. Burgundy. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Ron I mean, Burgundy. That would be good too. So that many good people out there. Too. I, yeah. I, you yeah. know, every week, whenever I hear like, "Oh, I, I wish I could teach that person," I'm like, "Man, that's another great person that could play Kendama." So good answers. I like that. Past, past, present, whatever, fictional, non-fictional, anything. I like that you included like a fictional character. I think that that's really a unique take on it. No one, I, don't, I think you're the first one to do that. Uh, so props cool. to you. Props to wow. you. Wow, thinking thinking outside the box on summer break. That's like against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> no, normally I feel like my IQ just dips in the summer because I'm like, what? What's three plus two? I don't. Know. I... <laughs> That's like students as well. I was always so afraid. Do you want to know one of my biggest fears after college? Yeah. Like in between my years of college, I'd go back yeah. to school and it'd be like day one of school. I'm like, I forget everything I learned last year, and I needed those classes as prereqs for my classes this year, and I'm supposed oh, to like dude. remember it. I don't remember anything. But it comes it's, back to you. I, I mean, it comes back quick. And any good teachers, and I mean, I guess when you get into college, it kind of is like you know sink or swim but in high school you kind of ease back into things because everyone's in that same boat even the teacher yeah yeah most of the time <laughs> that's the way it is okay uh one more question for you uh before we really get into the conversation here uh who is the most inspiring kanama player for you today not of all time but like in this present moment who do you really look up to um i mean shame on me for not like being super up to date with all the all the new gen and everything um I just want to like I don't think it's one person I think collectively what inspires me are the homies who who really brought it up during this like era I I I can't pick anyone I mean I have my boys that like whatever the Kandami USA guys that I was around the most but any other team like all those guys that were we were with they were also inspiring it's also sick so like I'm not going to single one out um but just that collective group and that energy was kind of kind of messed up fun (laughs) <laughs> dude i i lived and breathed the old kusa edits and the vlogs and everything when i was an early kanama player uh that was that was kind of the era that i came in you guys were all like the celebrities of the kanama community when i started playing 
you know, whatever that means, but like yeah. 20, 2015, 2015 is really when I started playing Kendama and I had like no one around me to play. So I just like lived and breathed on Kusa edits and on Sweets vlogs and stuff back in the day. It was like, really, those were the two main content streams at the time and whatever Chrome was doing with Bonds at the time. And that was pretty much right. it. Those were like the three sources of media and like a random collection of Instagram people I followed. And so I like breathed the, the Japan tour. I watched, I watched everything. I watched every video at that point in my life and you were in so many of them and it, it's kind of cool now i'm like chilling here having a beer over zoom with my <laughs> homie zach yord <laughs> i mean that's the thing man it's 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 weird how the little bomb cup brings people together and i mean i mean there's so many things like that where like just because you share this one common activity or whatever it's like cool boys you know we're friends you know yeah, it's, it, it's, it's cool. so cool. It's it's a really unifying toy that just brings random people together in such a unique way. I I've said this a couple of times in person, I think at NACO, that I think the most interesting thing about NACO is you can look around and you'll see a really diverse group of people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, yeah. ethnicities, from uh, even like fiscal backgrounds. You have people that are working pretty high end jobs to people that may not even have a job and it's just such a unique place and kind of everybody humbles themselves and really only focuses on this one toy and it's like do you like this game yes i do oh well sick you're a homie then i don't really care about anything else and that's really all i care about and there's very exactly. few other communities like that where you can kind of mostly disregard a lot of the other things outside of that game and just focus on that toy and i think that's one of the coolest pieces of kanala yeah kandama is not it's not super clicky. I feel like where a lot of, a lot of like sports and things are like, I'm sure I'll reference snowboarding a lot through all this, but like snowboarding can be clicky, whatever, anything can be clicky, but I feel like Kendama is not, but I think really good now. It's, it's ELE. Everybody loves everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you know, do you have an idea of like why that is comparatively? Do you think it's just because Kendama is smaller still? Do you think that it's kind of growing into more of a clicky environment? Especially, I mean, like, I think you've been through a lot of it now, and you've seen it, and you've seen it grow and morph and change into what it is today, but from your perspective. I, I mean, I think it's something that everybody, no matter how pro, no matter how whatever you are, they see it. It's, it's, it's a toy. It's, it's, it's this fun thing. It's very basic, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, it's not super competitive where people are like fighting for their their income or whatever like we're doing this for fun granted yeah you know everything all other sports you sort of do for fun but it's like you can't take it too seriously and i think everybody understands that for the most part so it's like why are we, yeah why would you get clicky mm -hmm. and like confrontational over somebody over kendama like i feel like people, mm -hmm. people know better <laughs> i mean yeah. sure there's people here and there that are probably like i don't know I don't know, I, Adam. I'm, I I try to stay very drama, very uh, very drama free, and just if Did, something's going on, I'll I'll leave. I just <laughs> you, you're talking to me. I'm, I, people try to bring drama into my podcast or into my comment section, and I just blow right past it. I'm like, mm, that's not for me to talk I, about today. <laughs> I don't got time for it, you know. No, and it's not like those things aren't important. Drama. It's not that those things aren't important, but just sometimes I, I try to create the brew view to be this place where people can kind of like breathe and just sit back and enjoy and come as they are from wherever they are and participate and come out of it being like, all right, chill. These guys had a great conversation. They love Kendama. They probably like coffee or at least that one guy who's pretty nerdy about it does. And, you know, they come out of it with some inspiration <laughs> to hopefully play some more Kendama and meet some new people. Outside of that, I don't have a lot of goals. Uh, I want to introduce people to people that I think are worth getting to know in the Kanama community. And that, that's what this is about ultimately. And so it's not my place to like talk about those things. And so I, I just don't think I want to either <laughs> nine times out of 10. No, but if you I bring mean, a beef on coffee, well then, then we get the drama. <laughs> Dude, you got a lot of people on here that don't, uh, I don't even drink coffee. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> well, once upon a time, it used to be a more serious endeavor that I'd, I'd call them out on it. And, and it used to be like, I think, uh, Carter Justice or Parker Johnson in one of the early episodes, we're like maybe like 10, 20, not even 20 episodes in. It's like October yeah. or something. Comes on with a Mountain Dew or, or something like that. And, the Dew. And, and it, everybody in the comments blew up. They were like, what? No. And we made a big deal out of it. It was fun though. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so I know who you are. I know a, a decent amount about you. I've seen a lot of the videos that you've been in, so on, so on. But a lot of the listeners that I know that listen to the review are generally newer players that are looking to get a totally. deeper knowledge of, of players from past that have really shaped the modern generation of Kanama play. And you played a huge role in that. Um, Want to give us kind of a, a snapshot view of how you got into Kanama, some of your influence and your role in the space. Uh, but I, I don't imagine we need to go like crazy, crazy in depth into the history because a lot of it is archived uh, via YouTube. Like you can go search yeah. Zach, Zach Yord Kendama and you will you find can, edits on edits. You can watch me go through puberty on uh, <laughs> in, in Kendama YouTube. <laughs> Honestly, that, that's so funny because like a lot of my students will, they'll figure out like, cause I have a Kendama in my classroom obviously and we'll play it from time to time. But uh <laughs> they'll go on YouTube and they'll find my YouTube channel and that's what I had when I was first starting out and it was just like yeah like there's a there's 13 year old Zach and you can watch me go through puberty on there oh that's <laughs> hilarious but oh, I love it it's good um so yeah I was introduced we won't go like I'll give you an abridged version if I ramble just I'll ask questions now. if I think they're they're appropriate <laughs> yes um so I was at the same high school Colin and I grew up together Colin is what six years older than me Colin Sander um, that is for, for people yeah Colin Sander for the, for the layman out there Colin Sander um so yeah we grew up I don't think we were ever in high school at the same time but we were all into he was in roll into rollerblading I was into skateboarding and snowboarding he was skiing so like we were all the kids who were into that back then all sort of kind of grouped together all different ages so we knew who each other were. My brother, who's five years old than me, was friends with him and his brother. So a kendama was, my buddy Kevin got a kendama and he brought it to high school when I was a, a freshman or something. And at the time, and he showed it to me and I was like, dude, that's not even sick. What is sick is Bolero. <clears throat> so I don't know oh. if you know what Bolero is, but dude, I was playing Bolero all throughout middle school because my Spanish teacher had one. And it's basically just like a peg yeah. with like a cylinder up top. And you just I have one like, somewhere in my room. It's in a box somewhere, but I have one. Dude, it, it, and I was like obsessed with this thing. And I was like, Kendama's whack. Like I, I'm a ball. I'm going to get into Ballero, dude. Like, no, like get that out of here. And, you know, every time I saw a Kendama though, I would like pick it up when he had it. And because I knew like the, the muscle memory of how to spike from Ballero, I was able to spike Kendama like pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And my buddy would be like, oh what the fuck Zach yeah give me that because he was like you're getting too good at it so eventually my brother ended up getting one again just to the like the the skater the extreme sport tree of friends um and eventually like uh it was around the house and I was just started playing with it I'm like you know what like let's go Colin was over one day and we were just like playing back and forth um and you know he was making his first edit and I was like okay that's cool and we basically did you think that was super nerdy that he was doing that like back then because that edit obviously just kind of sparked a, an entire change in North America for Kanama uh, but like for you being his friend watching him do this thing and it's like no one else had really made Kanama edits at that point in their life was that like did you guys make fun of him for that or what oh hell no because like it, it was something to do like again everybody references yeah. it. we saw it in a ski movie so I think yeah. there were like oh some of our pros our idols are doing it like whatever we, we think it's cool but no, I mean, like back in that culture, like we were all about filming anything, like right. any sort of stupid things, like epic pong shots. We made edits about that. We made edits, skating edits, snowboard edits, all that. So like, cool, we're just filming another thing we're doing. And it's kind of just what we did. It was like embedded in us. But like when Colin was doing his edits, I never had any sort of way of filming it. Like we had flip phones. Um, I had no, I had no way of filming it. So when I got my first sony handy cam that had a uh, little mini dvds to record on i was yeah. like oh dude it's game on so like colin would like come over every now and again and we would just basically just be like feeding off each other he'd be like dude i got double lighthouse flip and it was and then it was like oh dude i'm going triple i'm going triple <laughs> but i think in my in my first edit this is probably one of the favorite tricks i've done just because like it was so fun to just like progress yeah. and build off each other and just be hyped on it just do word of mouth and like these basic edits basically just made for each other but in that edit I ended with like a triple lighthouse flip and I like didn't know what to do I like got I stuck it and I was like oh 
oh my god my buddy in the other room's like you got it and i was like dude i got it and then i cut the i cut the clip because i missed the spike no <laughs> you'd be roasted today for that but back then i know didn't matter back then it was back then it was just like it's all good back then okay, nobody cared then- if you spiked like a spike didn't matter back then it was just like did you do the thing before it's like uh Yo, okay, so we were just at Van Jam this past weekend. Have you seen? Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that's we, Rod was introducing us to some crazy old school Kanama videos, and there was a guy who created Borders Balance, uh, who has some edits. Is it White Dama? Um, it maybe he wasn't the guy who created Border Balance, but Japanese guy. He passed away not that long ago, apparently, and oh gosh, I'm gonna forget the name of the edit, but he just like does all these nuts tricks that had like we look back at it today and we're like, there's no way that these tricks were done at the time he did them. And he was doing, was it, was it freedom Kendama? Yes. That's the one freedom Kendama, dude, legend uh, edits. I mean, that was the thing. Like, all right. Were you doing your thought? I mean, were you just going to, well, I I was just going to say like, uh, that was like the only content back then. And half of the tricks that he did, he didn't even spike. It was just like, did he pull it up onto lighthouse? Yes. Okay. Trick done. It's like classic JK. It didn't matter if you had to spike, just like pull it up, balance, hold. He was doing handle stall. He did wing. He did border all like, (laughs) what was that? Like 15, 16 years ago. It's not, it had to have been. Yeah. That's crazy. So, Anyways, I mean, sorry, I mean like, we, we, no, dude, like, I was going to reference, like, back in the time, we really didn't have much to reference. So, like, what we could find, it was sacred to us. And it was like, thank you. Like, mm-hmm. we, we had the little pamphlet that came in, like, the TK 16s. And that was like, okay, that got you, like, into it. But we knew there was more, but you really couldn't find it. You could find, like, a picture or two, but it's like, how do we get to Lunar from here? We just see, like, the actual balance or, so any video we could find back then, especially if it had like the the flavor of cinematography and like actual thought behind the edit to it, we we're like, dude, yes, like let's let's go with this. Like this is fun. Do you remember what some of the first edits you would have watched would have been that kind of inspired you? Because I don't even know um, what would have been out during that time aside from maybe Freedom. There was, I don't I don't know where they're from. Maybe Taiwan. There was. Um, I know the song they used was Avalanches, um, that boy needs therapy. Um, people will know that they reference it. It was like one of the first edits that was shot in like maybe like 240 frames a second or 120 frames a second. Okay. Um, and they had a bunch of like BMX and skating in it as well. There was Bitter Beans, there was um, Alex Roosh and um, Ben, uh, and oh my God, Ben Rasta. Jo- I forget his name, shit. We had those, uh, like, there really wasn't much, but yeah. anything we could find, we we clinged on to and it was like, all right, shit, I just saw Christian Frazier, this, this little kid in his basement like me filming edits. I just saw him do whatever, double lunar flip. We gotta, we gotta yeah, get after got that dude. Yeah, we got competitive, yeah. So it was so just like, we didn't know each other besides these edits and we we're just like, cool, let's like just keep going and have fun with it, like, you know? Yeah. That's super awesome. So you were uploading to YouTube uh, at the time. YouTube would have been in like its early days for sure. Uh, and what, did you guys get a lot of traction on your YouTube videos early on? Because uh, now they're pretty infamous in the Konami community. But back then, like, did they get any traction? Did you start meeting other people because of it? To be honest, dude, like I, I, I never even thought of it like that. I literally just uploaded them mainly for like me to have sort of as like a catalog and a bookmark mm. to know like, all right, where am I at? What have I done? But also just for like, I, I mean, it, our small group, we are connected that way, but honestly, like just the battle of like <laughs> me and Colin and like a couple other people just being like, yeah, dude, I got that shit. Like it, it was so just like friendly and whatever. And just yeah. like thought nothing of it. We're literally just like in our free time from skating and whatever, we're playing ball and cup and it's, it's fun you that's can't awesome. get hurt doing this so it's like chill that's so cool that's like such a unadulterated form of kendama before <laughs> yeah. before like companies started entering into the scene and all this stuff and so you were there before kendama usa before sweets kendamas before all of was... these like brands started showing up and growing you were there right well the story of like how I eventually like got into Konami Say is weird, but like before Konami Say, I think Rice was on it too. There was this company in, again, I want to say it was Taiwan called iPure. And if okay. you know iPure, like I, I think it was just like a random 
random skate and just extreme extreme sports shop that also had kendama in it but um maybe they're from china but they they like sponsored me and a couple other americans when they found our videos and sent us over some product and whatnot but yeah and we were just doing it for fun man dude that's so cool so when did when did kendama start taking over more of your life because you were doing other things at the time you were snowboarding you were in school what you were in like what junior high high school like what age would you been um it's like when when i started and like was like cool ditch the ball arrow uh taking on kendama i think i was probably i was in ninth grade so take a grade at five so 14 yeah 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 crazy crazy i always (laughs) think it's so weird when when you americans say ninth grade in canada we just say like grade nine nine. yeah (laughs) dude that's like i did some student teaching in new zealand and they don't call it maybe this is you guys too they don't call it math they call it maths plural Oh no, we say math. We don't say maths. We okay. don't we, we don't pluralize it. That's too much math for us. We 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 like to keep it singular. <laughs> we only need one. We, only need one. <laughs> we don't we don't need more. <laughs> we got plenty of math up here. Uh yeah, so when did it start becoming more of your life? When it was more than just like, oh, you and Colin filming some edits, going back and forth, lacing tricks. When when did the escalation of Kanama start hitting your life? I mean, like, I've never, like, I've never made Kendama, like, just my life, like, from day one, and I think that's why I still, I still love it, and, like, I'm not burnt out on it, and I think it's so sick, is because, like, Kendama was just, like, the thing I did on the side, and it was, like, I'm not gonna put all my eggs in one basket on this, like, I love it, it's so sick, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play it forever, Um, but I'll play when I have time, I mean, obviously, when I had, like, a vision, and I was, like, okay, I want to make an edit, there would be way more hours and, and, and time being put into it but it never fully became like yes this is my identity this is me like let's let's go with just this but I would say it fully came into like it, it started getting crazy whenever um and you asked about like view count never really never really looked at my videos as view count um because I didn't really care but who called someone called me and they were like and it might have been Jiro or somebody but the edit five that I made before I went to college they were like oh shit that video went from like 2,000 views to like a couple hundred thousand views in the matter of like a couple of days so right then we knew like what the fuck sorry can I swear on this yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead okay you <laughs> like do you man all right, do me. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you're you're one K off. I just looked it up. You're one K away from hitting five hundred thousand. So listeners, oh, no. get your butts over to YouTube, <laughs> type in that Zach Yard edit five and click on that link, get them that view count. Let's hit that thing over half a mil. The, uh, I mean, yeah, that one went from like, yeah, maybe like a thousand to like like hundreds of thousand. We're like, something's happened here. And I think it was on Kindami. So they looked like where it was coming from. I was like, oh, I think people in Asia have seen this. Like they're seeing that Americans are playing this at like a different level than what we considered it. So like how they had seen it. So it was like, okay, something's happening here. And then, so you had already been made four edits before that, that were just kind of just shared locally amongst your friends. And then this one just like went boom. That's a YouTube algorithm for you, man. (laughs) Yeah. But it was also like, I think, and it's almost like a pet peeve to me now. Um, edits that are just so boring and like stagnant where it's like yes you're in your house like we're just like all right trick turn the camera another trick like (laughs) like yes it's sick and we didn't know any better at the time so like that's the edits we were making but like Colin being a cinematography sort of major and having a background like when he started putting more thought into it I was like oh like I'm definitely not a cinematography major I'm still in high school but I, he showed me like, here's how you color correct. Like, look for, you're filming on a GoPro, mm-hmm. wait till you have sunny days, you know, make your shots simple. Make sure you can actually see what's happening. Um, that's when it sort of clicked. And I think that's why edit five was like, minus like the first use I think of like GoPro on your head. I think mm-hmm. that's, that was my first introduction. Like, okay, I need to make things look colorful, interesting. And so that anybody watching this can understand like, oh, the Kandama has done two flips. Like I can yeah. see that perfectly. I get it. Like, yeah. right. Cool. Well, I, what I think could be really fun if you're down for it, um, I can actually, now that we've transitioned to doing Zoom, 
Uh, I think it would be really fun to actually show some of your edit on here, talk through some of it, because this edit literally changed a lot of Kendama. This was one of the early edits that really blew up Kendama North America wise, uh, from my recollection. It was a little bit before my time, so I didn't see it mm -hmm. until post facto, like after the fact. Um, but if you're down for it, I'd love to ask you questions and like watch through some of the tricks and just like ask you about what the early days of Kanama was about. If you're down for it, dude. I, unless you want to, unless you don't want to watch yourself, I get that. <laughs> oh no, dude, I, I'm not that kind of person. Like you can you can watch my old edits, whatever. I think it's hysterical, man. Like it's crazy. It's all logged in there. No, man, let's do it. Look at you. You're a, you're a little Zoom expert, man. Yeah, we're we're learning. We're learning. We're learning. We're having fun here. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, I got it here. Can you see it all right? Oh yeah, dude. When we when we first got, I, I can see it. When we first got sent over this like uh, this graphic of Kendama USA, it was like, oh shit, we're big league. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, uh, yeah. Give me the prelude to this first. I want to know the background of the edit before the edit. So what this so what this led into me, this? This was going. In, this is my after I graduated senior year of high school, um, grade twelve. <laughs> I went and I had the summer just in my hometown um, of Pittsburgh to just film and edit. And Kendama was like high on the mind right now. There was traveling being done. The first pro models were being done. Like Colin, Turner, Jeremy were all in Pittsburgh for the edit, um, his edit eight. And yeah, Kendama was just like high on, high on the stoke. So I was like, you know what? Like, let's keep the motivation going. I have many ideas. Let's, mm -hmm. let's get it popping. Cool. And so you weren't sponsored at the time or were you? Uh, this one, I definitely was. Um, yeah, so this, this is one. Post Kendama USA sponsorship. Yes. Okay. Honestly, I, th I think Kendama USA came in maybe like edit. I don't, I don't know by edit, but maybe like my junior high school or sophomore year high school. What is that in American language? What, what grade is that? <laughs> That's like what? Oh, 10th, I... 10th, 11th? <laughs> yeah it would be tempting i don't know i don't oh know these God. words these are big words for me man we 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 only have one math we we don't we don't do math we don't <laughs> we don't have enough numbers all right all right let's uh let's talk opening sequence here uh edit has been brought to you by <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible font by the way <laughs> that yay <laughs> can you hear oh, it that too? Was, yeah that was not in there i added the little kid insert okay what what mod is this that you're playing that was the first pro model. Look at no bevel on it or no yeah. slip stop. It was that, that Colin's like, model? That a, no, that was mine. That was I yours. Think, I think it was mine. I think, yeah, like the, the, the seafoam green one. You had the seafoam green and Colin's okay. was... Uh, Let me color was yellow. Col yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It was yellow. Good old turntable. Okay, giving us the little prelude of all the tricks that you're going to be doing. I love when people do this in edits, when they tease you of what tricks are coming because then you're like, all right, well now I have to watch to the end to see him actually lace that trick. People don't do that anymore. They're like, oh, let me just show you the trick. Some people do. No, but. you you have to you have to build a story and like, you gotta start thinking about it. Like if you really, especially nowadays, if you want people to watch a, a six and a half minute edit, you gotta you got put thought into it. Like, how are you gonna keep them entertained with like the attention span of 30 seconds? So it's, you hook them in, yeah, totally. Yeah, and you're filming this all in Colorado. No, no, no. This I, I grew up in Pittsburgh, so this, this is in is Pittsburgh. All, this is in Pittsburgh, and I went to college at Penn State. So I, I was in I was in Pennsylvania, East Coast for up until about six years ago. Okay, years and ago. so now you live in Colorado, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so but yep, yep. Colin Sander was he also in Pittsburgh then? No, so he was. Or no, um, Colin's in California. He's in Los Angeles, but at the time he was. Um, he was in school in California as well, but when he would come up, come back on like summer break, winter break, we would always make an effort to just kick it and go skate and stuff. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, let's see, let's see what we got going here. <laughs> that big yellow. All right, that was all the right. thing though. Like, I realized that go to parking garages because you just got sky up there, and it's great for just viewing and a clean background. Mm -hmm, nothing's, mm -hmm. nothing's above you, but sky. Oh, look at those shoes that one-legged balance toss up to lighting i haven't watched this in forever so i was i was about a month out of acl surgery for this so getting up on that that little pole was difficult my buddy kevin had to help me out that's crazy and 
this is like what three years into you playing and that's on that's on uh dude i can't even tell what dama that is it's, that's another uh, one of the kusa still, promos no that's a that's a pink uzora i still have it too do you actually <laughs> i haven't evolved oh dude i haven't evolved much i, I mean the, i mean i have a jake ween's paw display i kind of just have old damas like i don't really have any of the new big cup ones kind of just rock the classics do you vibe with the big cups or are you like, no, 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 we need to go back old school. Are you, are you an old head or, or are you chill I mean, with the new, new gen? I mean, I could get crusty about it and be like, yeah, it's, it's easier. It is. But like, no, yeah, dude, like kids are stunting it. And if you want to get like to that high tier level quick, I mean, you gotta have it. And I'm all for evolution and stuff like that. I like to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I think we should bring steroids into Kandama and just see where it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I, dude, what's I, your take on that? I, I, I well, no, my take, up some people. <laughs> that's not my take on Kandama, but I, I think I think uh, I've been slowly getting into the MMA recently, like mixed martial arts stuff, UFC, mm -hmm. and I was like, they should create a division that is fully unregulated, like same like in the ring rules in terms of like tap outs and stuff like that. But you can juice yeah. as much as you want, and I just want to see the biggest of biggest guys go at it. I think that'd be the gnarliest. I mean ufc fight card ever why no not rules. like there's weirder shit happening in the world why not <laughs> yeah okay uh first trick See, dude, banger we, right go ahead i was just about to say right now and how we're chatting our attention span is like we can't even focus on this edit for like <laughs> we're a minute in and we stopped seven times <laughs> <laughs> all right banger trick first right. one That's the classic Zach Yord tank top and hat. Oh my God, that mop. Did I still have a, no, you didn't do a one, two, three, four. First try, look at that text scroll. <laughs> oh, it's cringy. Look at that, look at that chop, come on. Okay, did you mean to Sara grip that? Or was that, or was that one of no, those tricks that you kind of hucked and prayed? Oh, let me think. No, because the way I pulled up, I had to, I went it's double up to grab the tama in. Yeah, the way I like pull it up, I like have to kind of like claw it down and bring it up crooked. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> to the lighty. Like today, okay, so first off, the one, two, three, four, first try, that's still a nasty trick today that a lot of people like can't hit. I can, I think I, I don't know if I've ever hit a one, two, three, four. I've hit a one, two, three, like plenty of times. You one, two, three, four. Go grind you it see? out. You, you could, you could get it in like three minutes. It, I mean, there was luck on that one. Let's just, let's just be real. Like something was coming down where it was like, you're going to get this first try. I was like, okay, sick. I can get home early today. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to go back out today and try and hit those same tricks on the same Damas, how long do you think, do you think you could do it pretty easily? Or do you think you've lost a lot of that? No, I mean, my style hasn't changed. Like I still play yeah. the same way I did, I did in this. Um, no, I still rock a lot of the same tricks. So like. You should do it. You should do an edit five remake today. Like go back to all the same spots, refilm it, higher quality cam, uh, fresh cut, fresh look, and redo all the tricks. How sick would that be? Maybe even add stuff to it, whatever it is. So, like, I, I told myself I'll I'll tap out. I'll tap out at, at ten. I think I'm on. I just finished eight last summer. I have an okay. I have a concept for edit nine or ten. I like that idea though, because I've been thinking about that. But I was like, is that hokey just to do it? But dude, maybe going back and doing the same stunts. All right, let's do we cut this maybe and just keep it under low key? <laughs> yeah, low key. <laughs> Mate, yo, I, I, I always thought, yo, edit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, edit, edit nine. Maybe it's gonna be just edit five plus four, just remade. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I, I always wanted to do when I was getting into Kanama, one of my goals was to go back and not to like one up like past pros, but to go back and shoot all of the tricks that were done in an edit. Uh, in my area or whatever, like redo all the same tricks from someone's old edit to like master that person's style or whatever it was and to like re recompose that edit. <laughs> but I figured that might be, maybe that's taboo. I don't know. Maybe it's honorful. I don't know. It's like, it depends on the person and how they would take it. 
Uh, but sure. it, for me, it was more like, I, I want to look up to that person and do what that person's doing and try to like get there. Because I look back at old edits from like you, Wyatt Bray, you name it, anyone that was a, a pro from these days. It's like, I still have a hard time even comprehending half of the tricks that you guys are doing. And I've been playing for six and a half years now. The, st the style's way, I mean, the style's completely different. So like, I, I don't blame you. Like I look at some of the stuff now and I'm like, ah, what, <laughs> what is happening? There's just too much. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a little bit of gap and it would be sick to see a bridge between the two, but no, dude, I, I like that idea. And I know me as a player, I'm, I'm not going to evolve to what's, what's happening now. It's just, it was never really meant for me. And I don't think I really wanted that. Um, so I think, yeah, going back and, and doing what you do well and, and keeping it classic, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, th I think it'd be cool. I think that'd be a really cool edit to watch, especially right. this one, because it, it was went so viral. Okay, uh, what else yeah. we got here? Dude, I still do that trick all the time. The, the like, pull up. the not necessarily the pull-up, but from the cup. I do it from the cup all the oh. time, like uh, big cup tray flips. I do that literally the all the time. Ah, so fun. still a hard trick i haven't hit that yet i haven't messed with that either so we'll see okay oh, those clouds those clouds so poofy love this what is this song do you remember the name of it oh yeah yeah so this is the gorillas um one of my favorite groups the feed me remix of their song called melancholy hill yo hold up we were talking there but this this is a banger what did, what did you hit here okay hold on we gotta go back airplane <laughs> airplane inward and i you you go for like a double and then you catch it in a lean still in a there's lean no still. way no way you meant to do that on purpose. So, totally, Adam. <laughs> totally meant to do that was <laughs> no, that was no, way, you didn't. Way... Dude, so that was that was a trick line. Like I I didn't land till like years later. It was it was one, two, three, both ways of J stick. Mm -hmm. I didn't land that line. I didn't land that line until like four years later and just put it up on Instagram for something. But uh yeah, I never landed that line. <laughs> there for the senate <laughs> that's so funny i love those unintentional laces and then you got to play them off like you actually meant to do them i hit a i've, I've hit some Most, tricks like that before they might be I on mean, instagram people people can down players like if you get it you know that was not intentional but like yeah throw it in it's fun yeah it's cool it's cool <laughs> all right you're climbing up is this your tree house what's up here yeah it's in my backyard oh chill big old big old pine tree is this uh like your parents backyard yeah. Cool. Is that sign still up there? Yep. Okay. I vibe with it. So actually, okay, you want to know something? Underbird. Uh, you taught me how to underbird. I used to underbird like that all the time where I'd hold it in like Sara grip and underbird to the side. And it messed me for so long. And so big beef, man. It messed you? Like, cause, cause I, then when people like started doing the underbirds where they held it like Ken grip, and they oh and kind of bring the elbow towards belly button in to yeah like yeah, put yeah in front of them yeah and they put it in front of them uh, when people would, like pull that on me and they do like underbird juggle something i would always like pull it up like this <laughs> you're like, holding it sideways i'd be like I, I i don't know what to do how do how do i do what you're doing like do i have to like pivot my hand it took me forever because i had done it your way for the longest time like that uh because of this edit you're, you're like i'm stuck i literally have one option and it's definitely not a juggle <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, th there's many things where I'm finding out, like when I went on trips and stuff for Kandama, like the way I did a lot of my tricks, like that wasn't what the majority of people were doing. Like we do, we do what a whirlwind one way. I'd be like, wait, your Tama doesn't do a front flip on you whirlwind? And they're like, no. And there was weird things like that where I was like, I think I'm playing Kandama like very unorthodoxly, unorthodoxly at times. <laughs> like, well, your influence carried, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry for the the games of Ken that were lost on that one. No, no, no. See, I got points on people for doing it that way, too, because they're like, I've Respect. never done an underbird like that. Respect. Respect. All right. Some good Ken flip turntable. 
I haven't watched this in a while, but watching this now no. just reminds me, like, I gained a lot of my early play style from this edit. And, I, and I'm, and i like, only seeing that subconsciously now. Because these are all, like, tricks <laughs> that I really vibed with during my yeah. early years. Like, lots of turntables and, like, those big cup trades and stuff. You got in my they're head. Good looking, they're good-looking tricks. They they're good-looking tricks. And they you still can are. understand them. And, like, they just, they look cool. Like, that's always what I've been, like, interested in. They're tricks that, like, they look cool and the layman can understand it if they see it, you know? Yeah, that, and that's important for Kendama edits. And that's probably half the reason why this edit blew up is anyone who doesn't play play Kendama can still watch this and understand what you're doing. Today, right. like the kids that are doing like tap, 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 juggle, wake, triple Ken, blah, blah, blah. It's like, if you don't play Kendama, you don't even understand what they're doing and why it's crazy and difficult. But Yeah, it's, it's absolutely like mind blowing mental what they're doing, but like, you can't show that to your grandma and be like, she'll be like, I don't get what you're doing. Like, yeah. you know. Oh, the Insta trade like UFO. Okay. <laughs> oh, I missed that bike. Some like inward flips. The classic, like, you know that you weren't meaning to catch it that way, but you did it anyways, and you keep going. And it's like, you just keep playing. Don't stop. You just keep going. Yeah. Okay, I vibe with it, though. This takes me back. Like, <laughs> this this hits me deep down. <laughs> I'm glad, man. And I, I love the like I love those kind of shots where you can just tell the guy like it does regardless of who's filming it like when they're just like walking on a train track playing Kendama like whatever it is it's like they're having fun they're out there playing this game they're not trying to do this for anyone else they're genuinely just like enjoying it and doing it whatever they're doing I don't know like shots like that just make me remember that this person's having fun playing the game whatever it is that's literally that's literally all this was and like yeah it was, it was literally just having fun and then this was the first edit where it was you know it was more i mean obviously having fun with it but like cool i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing but try to just add more color more pop to it to make it a little more interesting mm -hmm. okay. all right trip j to still Respectable. <laughs> Respectable. Yeah. There's still such fun tricks. Like this is just like genuinely, like I said it at the beginning, but this is unadulterated <laughs> kendama. That? This is kendama without the influence of like clout involved. It's like someone's just enjoying the game, exploring it, having fun without like being influenced heavily by what everyone else is doing with the game totally exactly man and i love the glasses too can i get a pair of those oversized just <laughs> thought i was so sick <laughs> oh that bike dude i want that bike back the double inward look at that Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Is this all your hometown or did you travel yeah. at all? No, I think I biked everywhere for this edit. See, I love these kind of shots where you're just like doing something silly. You're just like <laughs> on a on a swing set. No way do you one, two, three. Well, honestly. No, definitely not. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Did you plan to go to this spot with a yellow t-shirt or was it coincidence? There was thought. Color was going into this for sure. That was, yeah, very intentional. Yo, okay. I like that. Dude, so fun. I love this closing shot. It's so cool. Silhouetted Kendama shots are some of my favorite shots. Yeah. You know, how does that one even work again? <laughs> I don't know. How do you... 
the sorry. sorry. Yeah, you yeah, like, I haven't seen it in a while, dude. Oh, oh my god, look at that terrible font. Did I choose that? <laughs> never, never. Yeah. See, this also, this one, edit number seven, one of my faves. Really like that one. But we we will save that for maybe for another day. Let me uh, okay. stop the share here. Dude, uh, what a what a pleasure and a treat to to walk through that with you. It's it's cool to just reminisce. Like like I said, that that was one of the OG edits for me that inspired a lot of my play. And it's cool to like right. hear it from from your perspective of you going through that and journeying through that. Um, what, what I wanted to ask you about though is you got sponsored by Kusa before that happened, and I know that a lot of the listeners would want to know the story of how that happened and really the early days of Kusa. Kusa has been around for forever now. They're like oh yeah the OG American economic company. They're there's just kind of like the company, but uh, talk to me about the early days. So like, again, going back to like me and Colin, just sort of feeding off each other and stuff. We, there really weren't many, many of us, especially that like, that we knew in America that were playing Kendama and Colin had relation, like a, a friendship with, with Jeremy Stevenson who owns Kendama USA. And when Jeremy had the vision of starting it, you know, he reached out to all these pro rollerbladers and made them the pro team, but also realized like we probably need somebody who's good at this and brought in Colin. And then, so when Jeremy realized like, maybe we need to expand this into more of a team, um, call, you know, he reached out to Colin and Colin, you know, vouched for me and was like, yeah, my buddy, my buddy, Zach, like he's a little Grom. He's hungry with it. He's probably what you need as far as like a little kid, you know, cause Colin's six years older, like Colin's well, is he that much looking. older than you. Yeah, I want to say Colin's six years old. How, if, if I'm allowed to ask, I, I, I hope your stu students aren't listening to this. How, how old are you? I'm 27. 27, okay. So you're, you're like two, a year and a bit older than me, like two years older than me. Okay, yeah. chill. So, like, so like, I th I th yeah, no. Um, God, I feel like I'm still like 16, though. It's, it's just how I live life. Um, but yeah, like, so I think Colin was basically like, cool, you have me who's doing it, but you also maybe need someone younger demographic. My buddy Zach is here. He's grinding and Jeremy was doing a trip into Pittsburgh around that time for a skate tour. And Colin calls me up one day. He goes, yo, Yord, um, my buddy Jeremy and some pro skaters, like, do you think they can like stay at your parents' house? And I was like, sure, dude, like dream come true, sick. So like Colin <laughs> brings over Jeremy, some pro skaters. They stay in my parents' house in the guest bedroom. And it's just like this super comical, like series of events in just a couple of days. And it was there that like, yeah, Jeremy was like, all right, let's get some photo, come skating with us. We'll shoot Kandama photo of you. Like, we're going to get you on a team and stuff. And it was then me and Colin that was like, all right, we're going to be these two Pittsburgh boys who sort of bring up Kandama USA. And then it evolved from there. We're like, all right, this is growing. We need, we need more. We need, we need to, let's get another person. Let's get on Turner. Let's get on Smith. Let's so you two were the first team. ones on the team. You and Colin. Colin, Colin, Colin before me, and I think on Konami you say like a bunch of, if you go to like the OG website, it was just, if you went to pro team, it was just a bunch of professional rollerbladers and Colin. Cause Colin, I think was a, was a pro blader at one time. Um, and then it was like, okay, let's, let's focus more on, let's get these pro rollerbladers out here. Let's focus on just Kendama nerds for a little bit. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So you were kind of the second official Kendama player that was on the team that wasn't like a pro <clears throat> rollerblader or anything like that. No. And then it was Turner. Turner was next. Yeah, there was a, there was a contest and we um, like a video contest and sitting down, we, we decided on Turner um, as a, as a third install to that. Yeah. That's super cool. Did you get to play a role in selecting Turner? Oh yeah. We were, <laughs> I mean, and again, like, and I think a lot of things like, you know, everybody who submitted videos, they were caught it all on the same level, like everyone shredded. Um, but we liked Turner just because like we were big ski and snowboard people. We saw there were big banners in his background of like ski and snowboard companies. We could tell he was just that sort of lifestyle, that vibe. And then he also was like on a different level with like a lot of those string wrap throwing mm -hmm. tricks with Thornada. We're like, yeah, this guy is kind of like Colin and I are here with like cup tricks and Turner's like on a different universe right now. Like let's, let's bridge that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's absolutely. bring him in. So what was kind of the mentality going around at Kusa during that time? Like it was an early company. There wasn't a lot of competition. Like what was the ethos like back then? I, I think like the first couple of years, like it literally nothing had changed because like, to me it was like, cool, you're on a team like that 
it, nothing had really changed for me mentally. Like, I mean, I remember like when I first got on the team, I think it was on Christmas or something. I got a box with like all of the inventory Kandami say had, which was just JKA product. So there's like six, there's like four TKs and two Zoras. I still have like two of them. Mm -hmm. um, never open, just like, I never got around to, I never got around to playing them because there's always so much new stuff coming in, but they're in a box downstairs and I have kids, they'll, they'll inherit them. But uh, yeah, nothing really changed. It was literally just like, all right, we're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And then it was whenever we're doing pro models. That's when it was like, okay, we're going to have our own model. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, that's when I think it clicked. It was like, oh shit, this is like a little bit bigger than I think it is, but like, yeah. let's just, you know, stay humble. Like this is, just keep doing you. <laughs> this is just a ball in a cup. Come on. I, I, I mean, honestly, cause like I did so many other things where it was like, I, I can't think of this anything more than what I've thought of it as from the get-go or else I think things will just change and it's going to be mm. not for the better, you know? Yeah. And you were involved in other communities like snowboarding and snowboarding obviously had that ethos already at the time where there were sponsored riders, there were pro boards, there was all that stuff going down, big comps, you name it, even back yeah. then. And so to compare that to Kendama, I imagine like if I was in your shoes at that time, I would have said like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like I would... I'm looking for that snowboarding sponsorship or whatever, that big money from Red Bull or whatever it was. Did you compare that at all? I mean, I did chase that path and I was a sponsored snowboarder for about five years. Oh, um, crazy. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, so like I did a lot of like the competitive snowboarding stuff in my home mountain and, and did some circuits and things and, and was sponsored for a little while. So like I did that. And again, it's going to like, I never tried to put all my eggs in one basket. Like yeah. I got, I got good at a lot of different things but I was never like going to be like, cool, I'm solely going to do this. Cause I was having so right. much fun with everything. I'm wasn't going to ditch. Yeah, one why to deprive try to... yourself. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to flow with everything. Like when I had time to do this, I'll do this. And just, if my friends are doing that, we'll go do that. It was never, never a serious thing to like really pursue it full on any, any one thing. Just have fun with it. What happens happens, man. Yeah. That's super cool. Okay. Um, I've heard the rumor that at Kusa you get to pick a player to like bring on to tribe or something like that. Right. Uh, mo most of the Correct. pros would get to like bring someone on or like their pick on the team. Who was your pick? <laughs> so my, mine was weird. I, uh, I, gu I guess mine would be Skagline, but I guess like Colin had already picked Skagline, but Colin also picked Wyatt Bray. And it was basically just like, all right, we understand like Brian and Bray both need to be on the team. So like, I, I think like I was just like, all right, Colin has sort of found these two. I'll just sacrifice my pick. Mm -hmm. But I also think like I had a lot of saying being like, Skagline needs to be on here. Like Skagline also was grew, grew up in Pittsburgh and we met through like mutual friends and stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna go on record and say Skagon was my pick. Sorry, sorry, Sander, but like you, you picked Bray. You made edit. You made. You only get one pick, Sander. Come on. Yeah, you you made Mario Party edit with him <laughs> and stuff. It was just like Skags is mine. I get credit for Skags and all of his six success. Actually, you know, if we're talking somebody who inspires me, like I consider Skags my child, and I get to like live through him, uh, and has as he continues to like keep sort of my style of play alive, and get to see him evolve that and just continue with Kendama and be him yeah actually cool. he's a uh, he's one of my groomsmen i'll see him in a few days here oh no way yeah uh i was gonna ask you about your wedding here in a little bit because uh, i think uh, that's a timely question but you're you're uh tying the knot here real soon dude i i went and picked up my ring yesterday and i was wearing it i've never ever worn a ring and it's like wearing it i was like i feel like a changed person but, but yeah like, I, uh, oh, shoulders pull back a little bit more stands a little taller i grow a couple all chapters. of a sudden a little like mustache starts <laughs> brewing oh my god um but yeah getting married it's gonna be sick kelly is uh kelly's my soulmate she's pretty amazing so how'd you meet her stoked <laughs> we uh we met back in high school um we dated for like whatever like four or six months and then ended things and just stayed friends we both did college our own ways and then after college we were like you're in pittsburgh i'm in pittsburgh let's uh what's going on and it just kind of worked so what, what's going on that's happened. gonna be my next uh next dm line that i'll, I'll send out what, what's, oh, going uh, <laughs> what's going on hey what's going on <laughs> 
That's super cool. Okay. Uh, talk to me about Skaggs. I'm curious. What, what was your relationship like with Skaggs when you first met him, when you realized you wanted to bring him on the team? And A, like, what was Skaggs like pre-Kusa? When did I mean, he become Skaggs and not just Brian? He's always, I mean, when did he become Skaggs and Brian? What do you mean by that? Like, Dude, I mean, he's, like, when he's did always... Skaggs become Skaggs in Kandala? You know? I th- All right, so... Brian's always had that energy to him since day one, since they met him. I mean, he's gone through so many looks. Like he's probably you'd probably know about his like his his record <laughs> days. Like, dude, I'm Skagwan. Dude, my my <laughs> but, my chat with him on review was one of my faves. So funny, such a funny dude. Dude, I mean, that's the thing. Like Brian, you know, he could he could sell what are one of those expressions? He could sell air to a air yeah, to ice to an Eskimo. Uh, yeah, he could sell ice to an Eskimo. He just has that mentality and persona to him where it's just like, yeah. yeah, this guy, you need him around. He brings, he brings good energy, but when did he become Skaggs? I think it was like, you know, he was always so humble about it. I mean, all the people we surround with, ourselves with in Pittsburgh, we're always very humble people. And he knew he was like not going to be this champion of it off the get-go. We all did. And, that, and that's great. But he knew like, cool, when I go into something and I'm into it, I can contribute. Like he knew his value and where he could insert himself and, and, and be relevant. And he did that so well and continued to do that so well. So I think he became Skagline whenever he went to maybe his like first KWC with us and people realized like, holy shit, like this dude is yes, very good at Kandama, but he's also like just a very awesome person to be around as many Kandama players are. Mm -hmm. So I think when people met him, that's when it revolved from like, cool, I'm Brian to, What's up? I'm Skaggs. And yeah. as he felt more comfortable in the community. Um, and we, as Kandama players, we just like to abbreviate the shit out of things. So like, cool. <laughs> we're going to take, we're going to take your last name because Brian is boring and we're going to shorten it. You are now Skaggs. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do you ever go by Zach in the Kandama community or do people just call you Yord? I don't, I don't even know. What do you guys call me? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I feel, I feel like, no. And then in the Kandama community, people would always call me Yord. Weens would always call me Yordles. Yordles. I, I, yeah, I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Yordles so, or Yordy is what I've been called in like high school and college. Yeah. What was it like when you started adding other people to the team? The team grew beyond like you and Colin and the originals and it started becoming full with lots of other people. There was Weens, Keith Matsumura, Dave Mateo, Haley Bischoff, Wyatt Prey, Dylan Westmore. It's just like the, the list kept growing and growing and growing. And there were so many people, like epic people. I mean, that's the thing though. Like it'd be one thing if there was like somebody added where it's like, this doesn't make sense. Like we're all this type of personality. We're all meshing. And then we add somebody who doesn't, that was never the case. It was like, we strategically pick people one because they're good at condom, but also because like, we need to be able to vibe with them. If we're going on trips, like you don't want beef off the get go. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so when we kept adding more people, it was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, I love hanging out with you guys. And whenever we get together and do that, it's just like awesome. So when we had more people, I was like, that's fine. Let's keep doing it as long as we can. Dude, that's so cool, man. I I wanted so bad when I first started playing to like end up in a Kusa vlog, go on a trip with you guys. Like I think every young Kendama player in the like mid 2010s, that was like the goal. It wasn't to win a comp. Well, at least it wasn't for me. I could care less about winning a comp. I just wanted to be with you guys, hanging out on the road, rolling up to New York Toy Fair, seeing you guys jamming at the booth, selling damas, and be like, yo, what's up? My name's Adam. Right. <laughs> and like, that was that was always it because you guys did always have that vibe or that ethos around you that we're here to have fun and we freaking love this game. And we want other people to love it too. But that, that was the thing. Though. Like we kept adding such like influential and like, amazingly talented people that like we stacked our boats so big so like you watch these edits and you're like oh my god like that looks like a good time it, it was but we had very talented people that could showcase that yeah so talented that a lot of them left to go do their own their own endeavor so yeah i think for a while people were like well what has happened to kandami usa like it, it's not what it used to be and it's just like yeah like people want to go do their own things it's in a low, but like you look at it now, it's like coming back up with some amazingly talented people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. I, talk to me about like your highlight from Kendama USA. What was like a, a big, big moment for you during your time on the team? Obviously you're still um, on the team, but. 
I, <laughs> that's a good question, dude. I don't even know where I stand with that. Oh, um, hot takes. Well, we'll get there in a, in a minute. Hot but. takes. Yeah. Um, what was your question? <laughs> yeah. What, what were some of your highlights? Like, I guess for me, like I look back and I watch a lot of the edits and you know, some of my favorite Kusa created content was, I mean, I, I am un, unashamedly admitting I was a big TJ Coles, Nick fanboy when I was, when I was getting into Kanama. I He's also going to be at my wedding. Is it? Yeah. 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 It's a big, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a K- one. Kendama's galore. Did you get them Kendama's for their, their crooms, groomsmen gifts? TJ's and a groomsman, but no, I should have added that to the groomsman gift thing. Huh. Cause there that are some cool. just like underground. All right. Anyway, go on. Sorry. <laughs> but, but like the TJ make waves tour or whatever, like the Dylan Westmoreland and TJ downtown days, you name it. Like those were some of the, the yeah. key pieces in my early journey of getting me going. And you're at obviously like, all those things, those are like highlights for me looking from an totally. outside in, but what were some of your highlights from the inside looking out? No, they, they totally weren't. Um, some of the highlights, they're, they're going to be these trips. Again, like I think the most special memories are made with like other people. Um, so to start off maybe chronologically, I think that first trip where we knew we, we had these pro models made and it was me, Colin Turner and Jeremy just going around Pittsburgh and filming this edit and, and being like, this could be the start of something. Like, this is kind of cool. Cause you know, people get their own pro mm-hmm. skateboards, go, pro whatever. It's like, we're filming this edit. It's the first time I feel like a Kendama trip has ever happened. Um, that was special. Fast forward. I think that first trip to Japan, um, I want to say it was 2012 again, where it was me, Turner, Jeremy, Colin, um, and Smith just going through Japan at our own pace, no schedule, no nothing. Super special. Um, first Kingdom World Cup was really special. I, I mean, dude, there, there's so many moments. I mean, I live in the moment, so I really kind of forget, forget like a lot of the specifics and I know a lot of pop to me, but. Um, I guess maybe I'll, I'll ask it in a more pointed way. Uh, yeah. If you could go back and repeat any one trip, what trip would you repeat? Kendama World Cup, the the first one, I think it was 2014. Is, is that the one uh, where you guys film uh, Kendama Yusei goes to Japan or uh, Kusa Japan? I can't remember what the title of the edit is, but it's like Kusa Japan tour. It's the one where, uh, is it you or is it Turner Thorne who does the border balance flip? No, so that was that was first trip ever. That was no Kendama World Cup. That was like, I think the 2012 one. And was that you? No, that was Turner. That was Turner. Okay. I was like, My it was God. either you or Turner and I can't remember. I, ch- I chased that trick last, I want to say it was last summer. And I got it on like a stubby, a stubby spiked <laughs> Dama and like didn't do it nearly as clean as he did, but I had to do that one for him. Um, no. And then like two years later when the Kenumbra World Cup happened, that was like, if I could go back to that, I mean, that was just a wild time where it was like, fuck, we're bringing everybody, hmm. not just the United States, everybody. We don't know how this thing is going to run. It's very just like trial run sort of things and the hotel and stuff and just like organized chaos at its finest and just everybody being so stoked no matter how shitty or how amazing it went. Yeah, dude, that's so cool. I man, uh, I can't wait to have that story, you know, of me going to Japan. That's that's the hope for 2022 is like going. going to KWC, dude, you'll get out there. Get close. Dude, you'll get out there i mean yeah. listen you're already making you're making moves and you're doing what you can like you went to van jam and stuff like how was that dude, dude you probably was, have an episode coming out about it but i i, I already uploaded five <laughs> there there's five of them up on the podcast i podcast oh, you were doing as you went oh, yeah look at that dude we we recorded our car trip up so it was me kareem uh, peaches and kareem on instagram jared black, up, at jared black and mm-hmm. uh layton uh speg and or layton eddie and he goes by uh layton or he goes by kendama.spag or spag.eddy. He's got like multiple Instagrams. I don't know. He's got like a skate one, his personal one. He's got too many, whatever it is. Uh, and we did an episode on the road trip up on the first day, one on the second road trip on the second day because we split it into two days. And then we did one at the pre-jam. So when we arrived, we did an episode of us like jamming before the event. We did one during the event. And then we did one on the way out. So it was like four or five episodes and so Shit. fun. And it was just, okay. So for me, it was like, I knew Colin Hislop wasn't going to be there. So I knew there wasn't going to be a band jam edit from Colin Hislop 
or from anyone who normally would do it, I was like, okay, I'm going to be there. How can I contribute to this event in a unique way? What if I just podcast right. it? And so we did it. I mean, dude, how are, how are the homies? Was it so sick to just be like with everyone again? <laughs> It was so fun. I had oh, probably the best man. time I've yeah. had since last year's event, Brew Battle, of just right. jamming with people. I didn't care. I got knocked out round one by Lucas Adverse in the con. Couldn't care less. It was awesome. Too. Great match. He beat me DAMA to DAM. Uh, I don't think either of us had Prubits. So it was a close match. Regardless, I was totally cool with it because then after that, I just got to be the hype man. I got to play chill games again with people, just chat with people. I got to podcast everything. And it was just so fun. Oh, I want to go back so bad, but I'm not. Okay. Hot take. Here's my hot take real quick. Here's your hot take. Everybody yeah. wants to move to Vancouver. I don't. I visited. I don't want to live there. I realize it's so Ooh. cramped, heckin' expensive, and it's a great place to visit. I don't want to live there. Sorry. I. Uh, whoa. Not I sorry. mean, yeah. Th throwing, some, throwing some shade at, at the at Vancouver. I was not expecting that route, but like, dude, no, I, I feel that. I live in Denver and it is like the Mecca it is so expensive and it's becoming overcrowded and it's like, we want to stay here, but dude, to buy like a 500, um, to buy like a 750 square foot cottage, 600,000. Yeah, well, you, you think that's I, I expensive. Mean, then you go to Vancouver. You want to buy like a, an apartment. It's like a million dollars. It's, it's dumb. It's dumb expensive. And we went out for break. Okay. Here, here's my one yeah. one major beef from the weekend. We are, went you, out. are you like are you like me? You're pretty like good with money, but you're cheap with it. Uh, like, <laughs> He's like, I, no, dude, I'm making it, and I'm no, 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 it. no, no. <laughs> I I have no problem spending money, but I only buy things that I like want. I'm not a I'm not a frivolous spender generally. But if I'm gonna buy right. something, I want to buy something nice. Like I'm gonna buy yeah. the things that I want, and I'll buy nice things. And so sometimes I'll spend money. But Good. we went out for and a food. I like spending money on food. Food is like one of the luxuries of my life that I didn't get a lot of. Uh, or like, I never got to eat out as a kid. I have a sister with a disability. Yeah. We could never really take her to restaurants, so on, so on, so like, I never got that opportunity too much as a kid. So now yeah. I take that opportunity every time I can to like go eat fancy food because it, it's like I'm, I get to reap that now. Uh, and so we went out to this little cafe called Juliet's, which is like a five minute walk from Max Angel's house, mm -hmm. and. Yeah. It looks super cute on the outside. It like looks where you're going to take a nice girl on a, on a nice first date or wherever you're like going to take her there. It's going to be a really cute, affordable breakfast spot. You're going to get that eggs, Benny. It's going to be great. And then you're going to walk out with a $60 bill paying for her, her breakfast and your breakfast. And it wasn't even that good. It was like mediocre. It was, it wasn't the best eggs many I've ever had. Uh, it was like a, it was a moderate eggs many and it was 25 bucks for the eggs, Benny. And then like five bucks for the coffee. I spent $30 there. It's too much. I mean, Can't yeah, that, I mean, I mean, that, that shit sucks. I, I, I really don't know even like know how to like approach that just because yeah, that sort of situation is like a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. And so, it's just uh, like, dude, I'm, especially when it's just like, uh, you know, you could have probably done something different or like gotten something different to make it better. But it's like, it's like, what, honestly, for me, like, I'm a big craft beer nerd. It's like, cool, I'm gonna spend $22 on a four pack of beer. And then it like kind of sucks. You're like, it wasn't that good. Yeah, uh, when you get a bad no. one, you just regret it even more. Yeah, I feel that. That's like coffee. I've spent I spent fifty dollars on a bag of coffee before, and right. if it's not that good, then I kind of hate that company after that because I'm like, you just made me spend a lot of money on a coffee I didn't end up liking that much. What's it, what's your take if you if you're buying a bag of beans and they're sweaty beans, like they're they're like got some. Oh, they, when, that mean when too like new or too old? Yeah. Uh, they're just looking they're looking sweaty looking oily yeah we're not we're not talking like dark roast like not anything yeah. like that like we're talking like a lighter roast i i honestly don't understand how that happens with the packaging and i can't say that happens all that often with me like when you fr cut open a fresh bag or something like i don't think that's ever really happened to me so i don't know i mean i've been seeing it like because I, I know like you know i i, I try not to buy coffee that's I, I, I want it beyond a week. Like I try not to buy within the week. It's just like a weird thing. Mm -hmm. Something when I get like two fresh of beans. Yeah, yeah. Get, you like, gotta let them sit. Green. You gotta let them sit for like two weeks. Right, right, right. So like I don't want any of that like green pepper or like bell pepper sort of characteristic to my coffee. And you get that a lot with like fresh stuff. Yeah. I used to dude, you know like the popcorn poppers you put on a stove yeah. top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do my own coffee beans. I'd buy green did beans. Did you roast your own? I, oh I I did when I was 
So after college, I lived with my parents for like six months until Kelly and I found a spot. And um, <laughs> dude, I would smoke up their house. I would buy so many <laughs> green beans. And here I am on the stovetop with this popcorn popper. You put the green beans in, smoke's already going and stuff. And you have to, you have to yeah, you this can't thing stop. for no for for a couple minutes i forget it's a good thing you're a kendama player you already got that forearm you know (laughs) dude i know i was freaking yoked um (laughs) but then i mean but it it would smoke the entire place but a lot of that like i learned like when i first like roasted them i was like cool i'm gonna drink this tomorrow it's gonna be great and i was like no like it actually was best a week or two out Mm -hmm. um and after reading a couple things i realized that was a thing but yeah I, I as much as I am like a coffee nerd I'm kind of a basic coffee nerd I don't like I know the things that I should be doing but like it's like <laughs> that whole like uh that conversation we had at the beginning about school it's like I could put in the extra hour of effort to increase the quality of my coffee by five percent if I you know store my beans in a in an airtight container or f- dry freeze them or whatever all these things I could right. do those things And I know that they're great for me and for my coffee, but it's like, that's a lot of money and a lot of extra time for marginal improvements. And I'm like, ah, I'm too much efficiency minded. No. And dude, I I respect that. And I feel like, I mean, granted, I have like summers off and I don't usually work a summer job. Um, At least nowadays I I won't until, until I have little baby yords running around. I I don't Mm -hmm. enjoy my summers, but I have time to get into like nerd out over things. And I think from brewing beer, I've always appreciated just the process of that sort of thing. So if I can learn mm-hmm. anything about that, I'll, I'll go full in on it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, All right, let's take, jump back into Dama. Yeah. 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 Jump, jump me back into Dama <laughs> here. You were rolling with the Kusa squad. It started growing and, you know, obviously edit five ended up coming around. Uh, you guys went on a lot of tours. Like Kusa was everywhere. You guys were the Kings of America until like Kenko and Swiss Kendamas kind of started brewing up. Uh, what was that like when you started seeing other companies start sprouting and these other teams? What, what what was that like for you being a sponsored player? I mean, I don't think we like thought anything bad of it because it was like, you can't expect to be the only person monopolizing on this for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so much, so much love for Matt Sweets, by the way. Um, what yeah, a, what a great love. dude and just everything he's doing. But um, yeah, like when we start seeing companies pop up, I think like, again, I don't, I don't get myself in drama, but obviously there was some drama there with like, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're stepping on our turf, they're stealing our swag, yada, they yada, They came yada. into Pittsburgh, come on. Yeah, I, I mean, but like some things like, I don't know, it, where do I want to, where do I want to go with this? I mean, I liked I liked the sense that there were different flavors being added to it because every company brought something brought something different to the table. I mean, Kenco like they were seen as like and they were stereotyped and whether it was true or not, they were stereotyped as these like big pothead dudes just like didn't give a fuck. And I was like, I kind of like that. Like every culture needs like like the bad boy, like the one who's going to stir up shit and make shit like crazy. That's kind of what Kenko was. The media attention guys, you know? Right. Sweets was just like this crazy dude who was really good at Kendama and there since day one, who was like, yeah, I'm actually going to just do this in the USA. And we're all like, that's crazy. We respect it. Best of luck, dude. And then like, look at him now. It's something that's just like, what a hero. It's um, crazy to me to see the growth of Kanama. I, I remember I've said this like a bunch over the last couple of episodes because it literally baffles me. Uh, yeah. When Chrome announced that they had sold over 300,000 pops, Chrome pops, that's over $6 million worth of Kanamas out in the world. And that's one line um, of Kanamas that they've done. That's insane. It's a, it's a good looking Dama. And I think it's got that like rubber paint to it. But but I don't think that Kusa or Sweets are much different from that in terms of scale on some of their lines or some of their Dama's. It's like, that's that's the same kind of growth and scale. And it's like, whoa, Kendama is a lot bigger than I thought it was. And it's grown so much, so totally. much. I, ca- I can't talk so much to like to numbers on things and like units sold and everything. But like, I think every company has seen a boom that's just made them shit their pants where they're like, oh my God, this is, yeah. this is awesome. And, yeah. you know, it, kudos to all of them and just stoked to see the growth and just, what's what's going to happen with it i mean i was talking about the skyline on the phone earlier today 
and he was saying the same sort of sort of thing. It was just like, how's everything going? He's like, yeah, we just announced the 300,000 thing. And just like, dude, amazing. It's crazy. Amazing. So cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit more about the Kusa times. Make me feel nostalgic. That's what I, that's what I want. <laughs> I mean, what were some of your other highlights? Anytime we like got together, it was another highlight is Froth Tour with Jake Queens and stuff. Yeah. Like, and just you, highlights. Who like, was who? It was you, Jake Bish, and Jake Bish. Yeah. Was it just you, you, you three? Yeah, and it was like you can make whatever you want of Kendama, and then there was the support to do it. Like Jeremy was really good about if he was really good about like treating all of his players like fairly, and like understanded that like we were helping him make a business. We were the faces to it. And he was really good about supporting that and getting us to where we needed to go to do these things. So like if we had a concept or an idea, he would he was never not down to to work with it. I mean, he was very real about things, but like if we had an idea, cool, we can probably make that happen in one way or another. Um, the trips though, it, it was, you know, we there was no, there were like no rules almost. Like sure you had to show up to an event or something, but if you wanted to go skate, or do something you could if you wanted to go film and edit you could I mean it honestly dude like I can't even describe it because it was just so much fun and there was so much freedom to it that you really didn't think anything but to just go with the flow of things now granted I'm saying that from the point of view I was younger and probably wasn't put in and put in charge of a lot of the planning processes to a lot of these big events so I was mainly like I'm having the time of my life. Just rolling up, like, playing Dama. Right. So like, for example, when we did like the Ken Garden Roots tour. So for the layman's, there was like 10 of us in a sprinter, a pretty Gucci sprinter that had like an Xbox 360 and was decked out. But there was 10 of us traveling along the West Coast, all put on by like Jake organizing this shit and Matt Rice. Um, I thought nothing of it. I was just like, cool, we're going stop to stop. All I have to do is show up and play Kendama. So like, I feel like my time in the scene of it, I had it very easy where like I literally just had to show up and have fun. And th those guys did too, but I didn't have to put in a lot of that skunk work grind and, and think about numbers or money or any of that stuff. Um, so much respect and thanks to the dudes who did all that. Those were really cool times, guys. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That's so cool. Okay. Uh, well, well, I'll ask maybe one or two more questions here, uh, more outside of Kendama. And then uh, How much, questions. Are we, do, we have a, do we have a time cap? Uh, I don't have a time cap. I have a content cap. So I always say, you know, when the content kind of seems like it's all right, we've, we've, we've hit a good, good, good spot. We, we chill it out. We, uh, we settle down, well but also dry. if you have a time cap, you can wrap it up when you need to. Wrap no, it up. dude, it's, it's all good. They're, they're self-sufficient down there. Chill. <laughs> I got the uh, time blocked, baby. Chill. Okay. Uh, talk to me about, uh, mountain life and, and ski bum life and your other hobbies outside of Kanama for a minute. Uh, you are more than just a Kanama player. You do a lot of things. And then after questions, I want to talk to you about baking uh, and pastries. So don't <laughs> yeah. talk to me about that yet. We got to right. save that for after the Q and A. So like, so mountain and stuff. I mean, I started snowboarding, whatever, in middle school um, and immediately was like hooked on. It was like, cool, need something to do while I can't skate in the summer snowboarding came way more of an interest in skating and was hooked to it competed all through like high school and a little bit of college and and all that and it was fun but getting older you realize like cool if I'm gonna hit a 70 foot jump and I like fuck anything up on this I come short or go long and I'm not not where I need to be in the air yeah you're gonna you're gonna mess yourself up so like even the little ones just just starting to hurt and as you get older, a lot of other people realize that. So the crew started to dwindle from the, the park snowboarding riding. So my brothers lived out here for like 12 years now. And, you know, he would always send me these photos of like, yo, I'm in the back country today out skiing and stuff. And I'm in Colorado and yeah. And I would go visit them in college and I would be like, it's a different world out here. So eventually we moved out here and immediately I was like, I'm not, snowboard I'm not riding park in the snowboard anymore like just not me I want to get in the backcountry so um that was my focus so you, you, it's it's a it's a sketchy thing especially in Colorado we have a very not so safe snowpack and what that means is that 
yeah, these things called avalanches can kill you. And backcountry is basically like when you're driving on a road and you see like a mountain off in the distance that doesn't have a ski hill on it, that would be considered going into the backcountry. This mm-hmm. terrain that is sort of untamed, there's nothing developed there. It's up to you, the user, to decide, is this safe to go down um, and evaluate that and just really run through every step. Are we being mm-hmm. safe? Are we making the right decision? So um, I've been doing it for about, yeah, five years now. And it's sort of become my life. I mean, I've always been a big runner and like sort of just to exercise the cardio. So mm-hmm. to do that as well as snowboarding, um, splitboarding, I guess, has been just like my new, my new love. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It gets really sketchy. It's also very rewarding and just, mm-hmm. you never, you never have to wait for a line. It's, it's very secluded. Just do you, do you still get ride to learn. parks much? Like, do you still go to the hills and ride lifts? I, I, I don't, I don't even have a pass to get on a chairlift. So like all of my skiing is, is just human powered. So are, are you familiar with like a split board? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ski so yeah, board, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, just split board. So like basically like last season, I got 80 days and it's just all wow. human powered. So you just, you know, That's walk crazy. up, ski down, walk up, ride down and repeat and you know in colorado you you start you start small you're the stuff you're riding and up until march is like under 30 degrees because that keeps you out of avalanche terrain pretty well so like basically like up until up until march you stay pretty low angle which means you don't go on pitches that are really over 30 degrees because that's when snow wants to start sliding naturally and you can trigger those sort of things those avalanches so up until then you stay pretty pretty mellow stuff there's no reason to risk it and die (laughs) but then come april and and may the snow and i'm not going to go into the science behind it but the snow starts to more mature and become more stable of a thing where you can get up higher and go ride more sort of consequential terrain so um it's it's a new love i've found for snowboarding to keep me so into it and i don't really see it going anywhere soon um it's just, I mean, some of the guys like I've gone out with, they're they're sixty years old and they're grinding at this. And it's like, dude, I want to I want to be doing that when I'm sixty. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's about making smart choices and not dying. You, yeah. Whether you turn around from your objective or not, like as long as you're home that day, it's a win. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever been to Canada to ride? Have you ridden anything up here? No, I uh, again during my my competitive snowboarding days, I want to. I won a trip to Camp of Champions, which is in um, I forget, BC. It's in Probably Canada. somewhere. It's in Canada somewhere. Um, but also that season, I again came up five feet short on like a seventy foot jump and busted my ECL. So like, couldn't go on that trip. So I've never been to Canada for snowboarding, but there's some there's some lines and some mountains on the hit list up there that I would love. Yeah to be on top of. we just drove through the mountains on our way up to van jam drove through revelstoke which is like the king of backcountry that's where every ski bum wants to live is revelstoke i know so. i have i have some buddies who visited and they're just like sending me photos and i'm like oh fuck you that looks yeah. so sick it's pretty cool i i really like snowboarding i'm not like competitive or anything like that i can ride i can hit the trees i can go down any any hill or whatever but I'd love to go backcountry one day. That that would be a huge, huge it's, opportunity. You know, it's it's an expensive thing to get into. The gear is definitely not cheap. And there's, yeah, there's just so many risks to it that you really just got to start safe and maybe just hire a guide or go with somebody yeah. who's pretty veteran to a safe zone. But, dude, I recommend it to anybody. It's so yeah. fun. It's so fun. Dude, there's a part of me that's like, I want to do these more extreme things in my life every now and then. Uh, I just watched a mountain climbing documentary called The Dawn Wall with Tommy oh Caldwell. Oh my God, how good is it, dude? It's amazing. It's yeah. an amazing documentary. And it just like made me want to like reevaluate my life decisions and be like, okay, maybe I should like try something big with my life and do something like exponentially dangerous. Not, well, it's not even dangerous. It's just like challenge myself to a degree that I've never been challenged before just to see what I can do. Like physically and mentally? Yeah, both. Dude, so that's, how, they spent what twenty days on the wall. Oh, something crazy. My buddy, my buddy does the same shit. Like one of the guys I go snowboard with, like about a month ago, he was sleeping on the side of a wall, like two thousand feet up, and it's just like, it's a different world. It's amazing. Uh, but dude, absolutely crazy. I mean, you gotta do something then. 
Yeah, we'll, we we'll see. Look. Just play Kendama, you know. <laughs> I mean, Kendama in weird places. There's your next edit, but like, take it, take it to like a crazy level of like those Russian kids you see on top of like cranes in in sky, like in the cities. Yeah, yeah, dude. I just, I just, I just UFO'd up here. Yeah, do, like do deal. simple, do like an Earth turn, but in the most absurd, ridiculous places you could ever do an Earth turn. That would be cool. That'd be super cool. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, to, you competed snowboarding what kind of snowboarding did you do like what did you compete it was all just like i mean it was it was all just park riding so whether it was like a slope style comp or rail jam i yeah i had to do half pipe competitions and i was like in a circuit and whatever i sucked at half pipe but mainly just like jump and rail so slope yeah. style was was what i focused on did you ever ride with uh keith metzmura no we we never linked up um you don't live that with, far from him now, do you? Is he still in Colorado? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I think he's back in, I think he's back in his home turf. Where, yeah. where's he from? I don't even know. When isn't he from? I think he's from Wenatchee, and I think he rides. Uh, yeah, he is. What's their mountain there? I think, I think he's over that way. He was in Colorado for a little bit, though. He was going to school there at uh, uh, CCU, right? Colorado Christian University or something like that. I think he's I remember from- him talking about that. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, everyone on our team was just so it was so sick because, like, outside of Kandam, we had so many other shared interests where it's like, cool, dude, you want to come visit me and, like, not even play Kandam, but just go, like, ski and snowboard? It was like, cool, sick. It was, like, friends. Yeah. So you, you never you never went skiing with Keith? No, I – but me he's, – He's also – isn't he also, like, really good? Oh, Keith was – Keith is pretty incredible. Um, I mean, honestly, I think everyone on the team – rips like everyone on the team from like tribe when tribe was first introduced to the pros like everyone on the team could fucking hold their own dude why didn't you guys ever ever do a team ski edit it was i mean here's the thing like we were also into these ideas and wanted everything to happen but they all couldn't come into fruition but one of them which man I wish it did was yeah we were all going to link up whatever area was most central and go skiing and i think weems was the only one that was like i rollerblade i'm sick at rollerblading but i've never been on skis so like he would have been like i don't know how that would work it would be amazing but oh that would have been so cool that would have been the content i wanted you know (laughs) also that that reminds me like whatever if i'm doing a spoiler alert here but like there was like a meetup between me colin and turner and jeremy like two years ago where we got together and just went like camping in the, in the Sierras in California and like filmed a bunch of stuff. I don't know where that's sitting. Something might be done. Sorry if I'm spoiler learning anything, but like also why has that edit not been? It's okay. I'm pretty sure the yeah. review listeners expect some sort of leak every episode of something coming out. I'm pretty sure someone always drops something on here. That's like about to happen. Ween's announced his baby on here. We're kind of used to it now. Oh, I mean, Wings. what a what a good dad dude, dude he just got what a great um, guest too he comes on he uses the review to announce his kid <laughs> like what <laughs> oh my god i thought that was the funniest thing that's ever happened on the review but uh what? crazy what's next edit? yeah i know um, what, what's gonna happen next <laughs> but honestly like yeah where's that edit like let's let's just get it going might as well put it out we're only getting older yeah yeah getting getting older okay uh let's let's take a couple minute break here and let's answer some questions from listeners of the review that want to get to know you a little bit more and uh shoot through a few of these they're not too many this is my fault i didn't put this poll up until later today because i just got back from vancouver last night so a little a little behind so we got a couple questions here though carter justice wants to know what your favorite edit you've ever made is um I'll probably scratch the first first six. It's, it's between seven or eight. Um, probably seven just because like. Seven came quite a ways after six, didn't it? There was a, a decent gap between those edits where it kind of felt like the return of your. That, that's how I remember watching seven. Right. And, and seven was honestly like a two year project. Like what I'm proud about that is that like I was able to hold on to these tricks for two years and like still felt comfortable putting out those same tricks, feeling that they were like relevant and like still never been done sort of things, whether they mm-hmm. haven't done enough, but I was still like stoked on them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, 
but eight was so fun in that like the fact that I was I had a lot of fun editing that last summer and just like making it feel like a video game yeah I'm trying to remember what eight was did you film eight with Skaggs <laughs> Skaggs had a cameo and it was hysterical. yeah yeah yeah, oh. yeah see like again it's, it's just it's just fun and I don't know so, seven and edit seven and eight that's when I like realized that like obviously my play is so different than what is happening now and to put like one higher up on a pedestal than another I think is like wrong and weird mm-hmm. but like my focus on those two edits was I want to make sure the shit I'm doing unless I'm super frustrated with that trick which rarely happened I want to make sure the shit and tricks I'm pulling like they're like exactly how I want them so like most of those tricks took they're not they're not just like I land it once and it's done it's like I had to look at it do I like it I'm gonna land it six times is it perfect like Mm. I I think that's that's a huge part of it too is just taking that time to really think like have I done this the best I can do it so it's one of those two maybe I'll, I'll say edit seven yeah, you did a lot of fun ones. You did a, a sky ball of like a, a J stick where you you did like the spinner J where you hucked that thing high in the sky in, in number seven, I think. I'm pretty sure it was number seven where you like either ripcorded it or you like hucked it straight up and it like did it spin like whatever seven times or eight times or whatever it was. And in eight, I always I don't even remember what the trick was. I just remember the scene because I think it's a scene that Skaggs runs in on uh, where you're doing some trick over some like soccer net right you're yeah. like doing it over the soccer bar where you're doing some spacewalk trick or something i don't even know what it is but that's that's the scene i remember from it for some reason i always okay. vibed with that kind of stuff like when you're throwing a spacewalk over something i don't even know but that kind of stuff yeah. is always cool to me i mean that's the thing like my i feel like my vibe hasn't changed since i started this thing and i don't plan on it you know if edits nine and eight do or nine and ten do happen it's it's gonna be what you'd expect to see from me and just a new flavor on it yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bray Dama, uh, owner of Sweets Canavas Canada, wants to know what your favorite mountain to ski in the world is. Um, uh, we'll break this into categories. I would say, like, actually, like, at a resort, um, I'll say Arapaho Basin in, in Colorado. Um, backcountry zone, I will say probably the 10 mile range in Colorado or the mosquito range, which probably means nothing to him, but it's nothing to me either. But Bray, Bray's a pretty competitive rider. Like he, he works at a ski resort too up in uh, Ontario somewhere. So he, he's like, he's legit. Well, I mean, I, I mean, shout out to my home mountain, seven Springs mountain resort in, in Pennsylvania. Um, but if we're talking park, I mean, Breckenridge was probably my favorite park to ride because their jump line was just so dialed and it was mm. just you could flow on it so easy dude you got to come to canada man if you come out here all i'm not you you can you can totally plow the plow the lanes in front of me by all means <laughs> but uh I'll, I'll go riding with you there's some sick mountains up here like lake louise fernie you name it there's there's so many good ones near where i live come to brew battle uh ski hills might not be the open yet but brew battle september 10th and 11th we're looking at we'll see okay. we'll see like Dude, two months away that's, that's, that's like a very- tentative soft date uh this is not me confirming the dates for those of you listening this is like yeah. a tentative we're looking at it oh, <laughs> oh this is this is the leak this is the leak people this have been the waiting leak. For. um wait do you do like is it just a kanama battle or do you do like a like a aeropress brew battle like i've seen Yo, okay, so th- these are the things that I'm starting to consider for this year. It's like, okay, last year it was Kanama and we had free coffee the whole event. It was sponsored by Soul Kanama's Ad, my homie, who's a barista, come out and brew coffee the whole event. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. So we're going to do that again. My whole like vision behind Brew Battle is like you pay your entry fee and once you're there, you are home. You are welcome. Everything is free once you're in. It's like invite, come on in. Coffee's there. There's going to be snacks, food, you name it. There's a comp. It's like a genuine party that you walk into and you don't have to feel like you're just giving more money or anything like that. So coffee's going to be there. That's a for sure. Okay. But uh, it is a economic comp. And depending on who shows up, like if Jake Weens is going to roll up or something like that, it'd be super fun. Or if you roll up, it would be super fun to have a brew off or something like that. I mean, dude, I think that would be sick. Like when I first got my Chemex and learned like, oh, there's Chemex competitions, like world yeah. competitions for this. Like that's amazing. Like again, 
people like when people find out like there's a coffee brewing competition that's fucking crazy like oh it's like the yeah. same thing that people think when they hear kendama competition exactly but like yeah don't hate it till you try it and like yeah it's just it's so sick but to get jake ween's fourth cup out there yeah well that'd, that'd be super sick i'd love i want i want jake to come out so bad i think he would be like the perfect mc for the event or whatever it is judge just character he loves yeah. coffee he loves kendama and he's such a great personality he would be the perfect fit for the event i want everybody to come like but yeah. then you were booking because it's still unsure whether or not borders will be like open by then i really hope so uh the venue really only fits like 100 to 150 people so we might fill that out pretty quick we'll see uh, dude i mean how big was van van jim 80 oh you'll be there you'll be there come on yeah 80 to 90 ish i think we had 50 people we sold out brew battle in one day uh it like or two days or something like that so this year we'll see i i if the borders open i think we could easily hit 150 people like pretty quick but if the borders are closed, I think we could hit hundred. That that's my guess. That's my assumptions. I don't want to like not. I'll, I'll knock on wood on that because it would really suck if like only twenty people <laughs> set up. I'm paying a lot for this venue, fam. No, it's <laughs> gonna get them Patreon supporters. Patreon, <laughs> Patreon. Yeah, shout out to the Patreon fam. I've been a little bit sleeping on Patreon because of this whole debacle with Instagram and stuff. I yeah. got so much I got to catch up on. Anyways, but no, much as uh, Patreon is like, you guys keep this shit running. Adam's a good dude. Keep, keep supporting. Bless. I'll try <laughs> to put on. Thank you. Okay, we got a couple more questions here. Uh, Julian AD, uh, he wants to know cats or dogs? Really easy. Re well, maybe it's a tough question. I don't know, but. Um, I have both. I have a cat. I have a dog. I'm going to go dogs. Yeah. If you, if you had to give, so if you had to give up one of your animals and you could only keep one of them, which one? <laughs> gonna make me cry well technically my cat uh is kelly's cat because she had it both whenever we didn't live together and we got our dog together so i gotta keep my dog sport what's your cat's name dexter uh sorry dexter you out of here <laughs> Peace. Peace, Dex. Peace. He, he's, he's hot and cold anyway whether he wants to be your friend or not so <laughs> or it's just 100 friend every day oh that's awesome uh a turner 33 wants to know why haven't we seen an edit of snowboarding and kendama at the same time it's overdue who's a turner 33 he's a, he's a backcountry buddy of mine who uh oh, sick. Yeah, a friend of mine out here he actually split, splits our ski house with us yeah good friend um we've talked about it i think edit i think edit six was like a numbered edit that there was snowboard like some shitty snowboarding and some kendama combined but never at the same time i think i'll pass that one off to uh eric martin i think he might have already done it i'm just gonna make him did he yeah he either, go, like i know steph lucier has done some like chill snowboard or like chill skiing and like kanama clips and obviously in uh keith matsumura's like big edit that he did uh for with kusa like the documentary style one he did some snowboarding in there and then juicy joker did a little bit of snowboarding in, in kanama edit so it's becoming a slightly more popular thing. Yeah, Juicy is ripping. He's literally tech wizard on the rails. I love, love just, you know, love that he posts on Instagram literally everything, but also saves his clips for like full edit. He gives, he gives it to both worlds on the snowboarding yeah. scene. Well, People who can do that, like Ben Harold, the same way. Ben Harold posts mad tricks on Instagram and on his stories and banks clips for edits, like nobody's business. I don't, I don't get it. It, it blows my mind. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry. We, we got two questions here uh, from Colin Sander, the legend, <laughs> the goat. Uh, Dude, question he's on my doghouse right now. The homie <laughs> can't make it to my wedding last minute. Sorry, Colin. Was he supposed uh, to be in your party? No, but he was supposed to be there and he can for whatever reasons. And it's it's totally okay. But <laughs> It's okay. I'm never letting yeah, Colin, Colin on the review. <laughs> Colin's, Colin's best friend for life. And we, we go way back. So many, so many crazy stories with that dude. And, <laughs> yeah, what's he got? What's he got? Uh, call, okay, first question. Would you have been able to land the triple lunar flip if the skylight in your parents' house wasn't there? <laughs> Dude, all right. So this goes back like when we were filming on GoPros. We, you'd land a trick and there was no like, there was no way to see what your framing was. You would kind of like, you know, set it up and be like, I think this is good. And you would, you know, you'd land the trick. You'd be like, yes, that battle's done go plug it in the computer and be like, oh, fuck. 
that, that trick I just spent three hours on is out of frame. Mm -hmm. So that was the case with that. And I think that's why I'm so OCD about like my tricks looking how I want them to, because like, yeah, I had to repeat so many tricks back in the day that I'm like used to that grind, but would I have landed it? What was this question? Would I have landed if the skylight wasn't there? Yeah. Would you have been able to triple lunar flip if the skylight in your parents' house wasn't there? Okay. So my, all right. Imagine just like a flat ceiling. My parents had like a skylight that went like three feet above that where I would always play Dom under because I could like throw space walks. You'd get an extra couple foot of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, because back then everything was always so lofty. You didn't yeah. know to keep it in the box and tight. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Hot takes, hot takes. Uh, another question, from Colin, did you know that the use of POV in edit five would become so influential and commonplace later in Kanama? Because was that the first POV clip that was really used in Kanama in Edit 5? I think that's what, like, I, I didn't know at the time, but, like, I was always trying to keep, and that was the fun thing, about, again, about me and Colin just, like, feeding off each other is that, like, we would tell each other, like, oh, dude, the thing I landed today, like, is insane. You know, Just wait till you see it. And we would know that we're working on edits, but, like, I was keeping that, like, deep in. I was, like, I've done the head mount thing and I don't, I don't think he knows about that. Whether it was the first or not, we mm -hmm. thought it was. So I think we just ran with it. Mm -hmm. So there might've been somebody out there doing it, but I think we were the, I was the first to like put the, put the, the melon cam on as we call it mm -hmm. and just film from there. It made sense. Cause it was like, people can't truly understand it when they're watching you like from, from the side, distance. they get yeah. it. Like to put it in your eyes. It's like, Oh, it makes you feel like you're the one doing the trick for sure. Like the POV edits are still some of my favorite edits to watch. And right. obviously that's become like a big trope in Kanama as well. Like a lot of players will do POV edits and have done them. Like Joe Nelson was doing them for a long time. Carter was doing them. Zach Magnuson, you name it. Like they've become yeah. staples of specific pros that have like crafted an entire genre of edits out of POV. And I right. imagine a lot of them would point back to, to your first original POV clips. And, and I think probably fortunately, he, your POV clips were in edit five, which is the one that obviously blew up too, right? So everybody saw that. So you can't like say like, oh, I never saw anyone do POV before. It's like, if you played Kanama, you've seen it, Zach. Yeah, it just made sense too. I think like they were marketing that camera to like be on your dome. So it's like, cool, you can do this with everything. You can do it with cooking if you want. Do it with anything, you know? Yeah. Like Kanama, yeah. throw it in there. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, that's Colin. cool. Super cool. Um, last question from Carter Justice. And then uh, let's talk about pastries after this. And, and we'll kind of wrap it up after that. Uh, Carter Justice, C. Justy 101, Soul Kanama's player wants to know who your favorite new school players are. Do you have any favorite new gen players that you found on Instagram? Um, or YouTube or wherever. I Down mean, the block. Um, I really do. I like Logan. I mean, maybe I'm biased because Kanama say. I do like Logan and Mags. I think they're doing some pretty rad things. I've always, always, I don't think he even knows this. Stodd has always been so sick. Just like his, like, charisma, his demeanor, and how he stunts tricks, I think is so just unreal. Mm -hmm. um, super new gen, though. Maybe not even, like, new gen, but people who are, like, super relevant now. I mean, I feel like... Uh, Christian Frazier is just a living fossil and he's not a fossil. I think that's an insult, but like, you know what I mean? Like he's, I would call my old teachers fossils. So like Frazier, you're not a fossil, but the shit he's doing, like, I think like us old heads were like, yeah, Frazier's continued on and is grinding to their level still, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and he's done it in his own steez and own style. Like sure. He does the new gen tricks, but he's also creating new gen tricks. It's kind of like yeah. Ben Harold, where he's kind of shaping a lot of the new gen play with the, the stuff that he's doing. Yeah. The Gallagher bros will forever just be dude, seeing them as chipmunks with their, their streak hair. And, <laughs> and just like the fact that they're grinding so hard, like much love for them again. Like, I don't think, I think a lot of the problem is, is that I, I mean, I still, I still have all the, I follow all these Kanama accounts and maybe I don't follow them super in depth, but that's the thing. Like if you're expecting, I shouldn't say that. I'm going to back, I'm going to retract that. 
I was, I, I was going to say that like, if you're posting to Instagram all the time, you're not going to get like a following maybe from me being too crusty, but that's super false because people go viral from, from tricks, but they might go viral, but are you really remembering that thing a week later? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. So I'm biased. I don't, I don't want to, I'm not going to put super input to that, but I have a lot of favorite players from, from, from growing up that are still just like super crushing now. And it's just so amazing to see it. Guys, I might not be posting things, but I'm seeing what you're doing and keep grinding, guys. Totally. Yeah, don't stop. No matter whether or not you're like posting tricks or whatever, just keep playing. I, you don't have to post a clip every day to remind people that you still play Konama. My, exactly. my, favorite, my favorite thing is showing up to Van Jam this year. And there's this one kid, uh, there's one guy, he plays for Swiss Konamas Toronto. His name's Enrico. And, and I played him in a game of Ken and... I, I beat him, whatever, but not the point. The point being, uh, he's like, dude, you're like a, a silent killer or something. Or maybe I said that. And he's like, because you don't like post any tricks, but you're, you're good at Kendama. And I was like, yeah, I got other things I'm doing. It's like, you don't have to post tricks all day long to to be good at Kendama. We're having a little connection issue here. Are we good? Yeah, I, I can hear you now. Sorry, I thought I was going to lose you there for a second. My internet connection is, quote unquote, unstable. So we're, fingers crossed, well, we don't lose anything well, you're here. Gonna wanna, you're going to want to hear this, um, but dude, you rip at Kendama. Like, I don't know, like, you seem very humble and like chill about it, but like, you shred, man. Like, there's no hiding it. And and sorry if the side. It's taking names, man. I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, well, well thank, thank you. That that mean, that does mean a lot. So I appreciate it from from the legend himself. <laughs> I mean, dude, you gotta you, you gotta know when you see something sick, and dude, you're stunned. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I do. I do very much appreciate it. I'm speechless. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, okay, talk to me a little bit about some of the projects you're working on these days. You put out a book recently called Peaking with Pastries. You also are working on this other project called Nature Caps uh, as well. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing today. And um, if you want, this is totally an opt-in thing. If you want to talk about your current state with Konami USA, by all means, uh, if you want to kind of give some insight of, of where you're kind of at in the Konami community with the, the brand, by all means. Uh, otherwise, like this is a no beef podcast. I try not to like, no, dude, it's but if you want to talk about things, talk about things. No, it's all chill. Um, we'll, start, we'll start with the quarantine hobbies that I developed. So um, I feel like I'm like, so my dog is a border collie and I feel like I'm very similar in the, the fact that like I have a lot of energy and I always sort of need like a job to be doing just because like, whether it's like exercising, snowboarding, whatever, like I need something to like keep me entertained. I can't sit still very long. So during quarantine, you know, I'm teaching from home. I'm just like, I'm not used to this. Um, I wanted to get good at baking. Okay. That was a lot why, of why I'm baking? Like, like what, what initiated that? So, so what sparked it was when we were road tripping back home, um, we stopped at this French bakery, I think it was in Sioux Falls, um, South Dakota, Sioux mm -hmm. Falls, South Dakota. It was this French bakery. And I was like, Oh, look at those macaroons. Those are look really, really cool. I bought two of them. Guess the price for two macaroons. Too much. Eight bucks. It was eight bucks. And I was like, there's no price on them. So like, I obviously bought them, but I walked out and I was like, are you shitting me? It was like our, I mean, they were really good though. So there's, yeah, not, was, not the same as Juliet's. If Juliet's had a dang good eggs, Benny, I would have been fine with it, but it wasn't dang right. good. So I was like, F this, like, I'm going to learn to make them. So that's when I was like, cool, quarantine, I'm gonna learn how to make macaroons. And then macaroons, I learned that like this French baking, it's very, romantic and very sort of rich flavors and just like very technical and I was like cool I have nothing but time like let's get into this because everyone's doing like making bread and doing sourdough Dude, the stuff. bread epidemic everybody <laughs> was making sourdough bread over I, I, my never... mom started making it and she kept coming over with like a loaf of sourdough bread and I'm like, mom I still have one she's like but I keep making that I mean sourdough bread is 
one of my faves but like I was like cool I'm gonna do this but like I have a sweet tooth so I want something sweet so like my favorite pastry is a almond croissant so I was like let's let's learn how to laminate dough let's figure this out and so many trial and error to like master these things but I feel like in our little tiny home we live in I've I've gotten it down so yeah I uh I will try to make pastries and bring them up to mountaintops with me and I let my yeah, as somebody say yeah, what, my, what was the like the reason to do that? Like you're like, oh, I'm just gonna bring this macaroon or macaron up, up, up to <laughs> well, this so like, mountain with me. You're you're in the backcountry and like you're having to walk everywhere, and it's through through powder, so it's not just like easy steps. It's it's a lot of calories you're burning. So you naturally always bring a lot of calories and snacks with you. And I would always bring like, you know, baked goods, whether it be like a donut, a brownie, something very calorie rich. Mm-hmm. And one day when I had a croissant with me, I was like, cool, I'm making macaroons. Why don't I try croissants? So that's what sparked that. And then it became sort of a lifestyle where it was like, cool, every time I'm going out, like I always have some sort of baked good with me, a pastry, and I'm going to let my phone eat first. I'm going to take a photo of it. And uh, I'm just going to post it. And it was just, I mean, it's still just something I do for fun and I get joy out of it snowboarding and eating pastries at high elevation and that's so cool stuff. that's such like a unique like memory capture too of like the mountain climbs that you do like it's yeah. not only like it's like a way of like tokening that experience right so I, I and I've always done and I get this from my old my Greek grandma I've always kept like photo books um where I'd like take photos on my phone but I'd still print them out and throw them in like an old photo really? book super old tradition whatever yeah and I thought like why don't I do this, but do it digitally and write stories along with it, showcasing what Mm. happened that day, maybe talking about the route and then as well as the pastry I made to go with it. So that's how Peaking with Pastries, the book came to be in volume two is in the works. That's cool. So uh, people can still buy that book, hey, Peaking with Pastries? Yeah, it's it's a lot of money. It's mainly just a passion project for family and friends. But if you do buy it, it supports me and it's it's fun so yeah but uh yeah, where, where can people buy it how much how much give the give the plug i think it's on my instagram link or whatever there you can go check it out there um but yeah again just a passion project something i'm doing for fun to keep me keep me entertained that's super cool <laughs> yeah. i i love cooking man i i never got into baking baking was too like meticulous for me it was too like you need to follow the rules cooking was always like ah, if you mess up you can kind of fix it and save it for the most part but baking it's like if you mess up yeah, exactly. If you mess up in baking, it's like, ah, uh, got to repeat and redo. Dude, so you get it. Like cooking is very like, my mom was a good cook and it was like, it's very do whatever. Like if you like add this, taste this, whatever mm-hmm. we're baking, you're going to grams. Like if you add 10 grams over on this and you're doing a small batch, like falls apart. Exactly. Yeah, it so, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I like, it's too much like annoying intricate detail for me yeah uh, i'm even even how i do my coffee i can be really lazy and like whatever and i'm like that with cooking too it's like sometimes i really want to measure things out if okay if i if i spend 40 bucks on a steak or something i'm going to cook that thing perfectly i'm going to go through every measure possible to make sure i do dial that puppy in uh, but if if i'm like doing whatever else i'm like ah let's just like throw things together i'm not going to put that much effort in it's that it's the same efficiency thing it's like in school if i know that it's worth it i will do it and I will do it to the 10th degree, you know, I will do it, you know, exceptionally well. That's, right. that's just how I do it. And other than that, I'm kind of lazy, but. But there's, I mean, yeah, there's like, and I want to say it again, there's like a romantic sort of thing that goes on with making any sort of food. Where yeah. it's like, it can be a very intimate and like, yeah, I'm going to make You got to give that steak a sweet loving. Got to give it that TLC, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, you get it, dude. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Um, do you cook as well or do you mostly like baking i'm so dude i'm the kind of person that could eat the same meal every day of my life and be be cool with it but like Mm. kelly tries to force me outside of the box so i'm getting better but um yeah i I cook my mom is my mom is greek and i understand all the fundamentals with it whether i use it as often as i should or not but um (laughs) yeah Yeah. no problem cool uh talk to me a little bit about nature caps what's going on there okay so shit yeah um nature caps is like a fleece winter cap company that i started and just run by me i just during quarantine picked up the skill of sewing 
And I was looking at old photos of my dad whenever he would take us out skiing and snowboarding, we were just super micro. And he would wear these trapezoid style caps. So like if you were to lay a knee down, on the ground and I was looking up on who so I was like what do you think about this is it hard to sew and she goes no it's a very basic thing so I was like cool I'm gonna buy a sewing machine I'm gonna learn how to do this so through many different stencils and things like that and having developed my own and figured this all out I taught myself how to sew these hats and uh I call it Nietzsche caps um the logo is that built based is, off of that old YouTube series the guy who like walks through Nietzsche and he's like that's pretty neat you can tell by you can tell it's an aspen tree by the way, like it, the way is. it is to be honest like i always i knew of those videos but when i came up with nature caps i i didn't relate the two but whether i'm associated with that dude or not i think he's hysterical hopefully i'm not do you remember the line he's like packing a gun and he's like holding a gun and he's like what, what does he say <laughs> he, he's like oh man i, I can't remember the exact line but i know the exact scene it was just like dude <laughs> I lose it every time. Go watch Nature Walks. Nature Walks on YouTube. Look that stuff up. It is the goat YouTube videos that I grew up on. Oh my God. So that's good. pretty neat. That's pretty neat. But yeah, so I started this hat company and I basically just run it through Instagram where I'll yeah. make, you know, five, six hats at a time and post a photo and whoever DMs first will get them and I'll send them out that day, if not the next day. And just trying to bring back this old tradition that was so near and dear to seeing my dad wear um, just one hat at a time. Hand sewn him here with all the TLC. That's cool. That's super yeah. cool, man. I love what you're up to. I think it's super cool. Uh, you got a lot going on. Um, do you do you want to talk about the Kusa stuff or we could wrap it up here? If you don't want to talk about it. it Dude, I, I mean, there's what, really... Maybe just, about- yeah, just tell us like, where are you at right now in the Kendama community? Like today? With Kusa, with the involvement in the space, what, what, what do you, where do you I mean, at? I think, yeah, I think like, I'm, I mean, there's really nothing to hide. I mean, not that people really even care. I mean, it's just like, we were phased, whether there was no, nothing was really ever made public. I feel like a lot of the information for Konami was saying like, just never got out or just things were developed, but never actually happened. Um, I think that's the one thing that like, again, too many moving parts and not actually getting things out, just getting too scattered with right too many projects and things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so no hate there, but I think we're, we were in the process of like, yes, taking some of our pros and moving them on to that next chapter or whatever that's going to be called or look like. Like I said, Colin Turner and I got together and, and, and did some stuff. And I think that will eventually lead to something who knows if it ever will. Um, you know, as far as like the pro thing goes, I don't think, I don't think we're, dude, I, literally I couldn't even tell you because there's like, there's a, a, a maybe like a lack of communication sure. about what it is or just like, or whatever. I, I, I don't know. Um, sure. I don't know if that's on my end or higher up end on Jeremy. There's, there's no hard feelings. It is. It's a big like, organization now. Like what, how many people work there? There's gotta be like 10, 20 people. Oh, dude, I couldn't even tell you. No, I think it's I think it's a pretty small. Oh, is it smaller than that? I th- I think it's small, and it's just a lot of people really grinding hard. So like, uh, hmm. last week I remember, you know, Charles, Dubaka, Sharif, um, Alyssa. Much respect to all you guys. I'm sure there's more in there too. Yeah. Um, but those are the ones that I know have been grinding long and just yeah. you guys rule. For real, for real. Guys for when he was there too, but of course. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been a lot going on, so. Yeah. And, and and like Kusa's Kusa's changing, it's growing, and I I like a lot of the things that are happening. I played the new Nova shape this past week at Van Jam. It's fire, yeah. like it, it's a really cool shape. It's really exciting to see some new stuff come out of Kusa, and and I think the players that are on there right now are really exciting to watch. Zach Magnuson is a great great player, and love what he's doing cinematography wise. I think he's one of the best in the game. Yeah, he's like a, he's like a young he's like the weans of our, of the generation now, you know? Yeah. Cinematography like, wise. Yeah. Like, Yo, you grind a Kendama, you know how to make it look cool. And you have this epic personality behind you. Like, yeah. So okay. that's, and I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a new way of coming up and I'm just excited to see what they make of it and how they live it out. So 
I hope they are granted the same fortune and opportunity that we were during our, our time with it all. Um, yeah, it's just exciting to see, man. Dude, absolutely. I love it. I love it a lot, man. Dude, uh, congratulations on everything that you've accomplished in the Kanawha space. In all these spaces, you're just kind of killing it across life. You're getting married. Who knows? We're going to get some little Yordies rolling around, some little Yordles uh, in the next couple of years. We got a whole new generation of Kanawha players on their way, I'm sure. Uh, and, and dude, I'm just stoked in general. We didn't even really talk coffee all that much. We talked a lot of things and we've been riffing for like an, two hours and a bit has been just humbling. It's been really cool to just hear your perspective on life and chat. And I think, you know, the listeners out there will grow a deeper appreciation for where Kanama was and the people that really brought us to today. So thanks, yeah. man. I mean, no, thanks, dude. It's, it's been fun to sort of reminisce and bring back some of these memories, whether I can really piece together some of the, the specific moments or not. Um, I imagine yeah. it's kind of like a blur. Like it probably all happened so fast. It, it really does. And like, you know, they'll come back to you at certain times and you're just like, holy shit, that was a wild memory. But right now, I, yeah, I can't think of all of those. But dude, yeah, it's been, it's been good talking. And just, it's cool. Keep doing this thing, man. Dude, I love it. Uh, we, ain't, we ain't stopping, even though Instagram kind of threw a wrench in our plans. We're, we're trucking along. We're making things happen. This new format where like you're able to go into video and stuff, I think like, you know, I know change can be like weird at times, but like mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity. See the upsides to it too. Like the fact we were able to go through and edit a little bit, like when you get to do that with like some of these newer players and like they can break down for like the new gen kids, like it's going to be so sick. Yeah. I'm really excited for it. There's lots of cool content that I'm thinking about doing. I feel like doing, I, I, I think I mentioned this on the last week's episode. It just hasn't aired yet. Uh, with James, I talked about creating content where I might, uh, do like going through old edits and reviewing them or like reacting, reacting to old edits and like catching up to new gen ones and just like talking through them and creating content. So new gen players can kind of see someone react backwards onto old content that existed a, because I want more people to post more content on YouTube because YouTube is better than Instagram for the broader community for sure. Right. Long story short, I just want more content on YouTube. I spend more time on YouTube than I do on Instagram these days. And maybe that's why I'm not like up to date with what's happening now. Cause like I still check YouTube for whatever skate snowboard stuff all the time. And I'm subscribed to some Kendama stuff, but there just isn't enough on there. Like you, you, if you Google, I'm sure if you YouTube like Kendama edit. If you probably. go on YouTube and you search in cafe Kendama and you hit subscribe, that would also help a lot. <laughs> the plug, the shape of the <laughs> maybe hit like on a couple of the most recent videos drop a comment on there hit that bell for notifications you know what's up oh my god i'll do it right now <laughs> Jared, i'll literally go subscribe right yeah, now. yeah 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 for real for real, for real uh we're gonna be putting these episodes up on there too there's a bunch of the old ones on there so it's really where all the content's gonna be going anyways Dude, but no, for real, uh, thank you so much for jumping on here, man. We've been crushing it for two and a half hours. I'm sure we could talk for probably an hour more about all the little intricacies of skiing, snowboarding, coffee, you name it. You have such a wide depth of knowledge that also goes deep in each category that you go into that it could be a whole podcast in itself on every category. And as much as my listeners would love that, I also need to sleep and get ready for work tomorrow soon. So let me uh, say a grand thank you and then pass pass kind of the mic over to you. I like to leave the court in your ball, the ball in your court uh, oh my with some God. closing Adam, words. Guys, Adam's had too many beers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just um, one, just one. It was a big one. Uh, no, 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 for real. Like is what, what would you like to say to the Konami community today, especially those that are listening to the podcast? I, I mean, yeah, totally. Um, I know from when I started playing and went through it all and just, I'm not, I'm not done playing where we talked about that edit nine. I like that idea, but the main thing is like, you gotta just have fun with it. And, and I think everyone's doing a good job of that. And maybe, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I don't, again, I don't dive too deep into this stuff, but just have fun with it and stay humble. I mean, th that's, that's the main thing. Just do you and like, don't expect anything out of it. I mean, set goals, goals, super healthy, achieve those goals, but don't, create some sort of thing like all right if i achieve this goal i'm gonna this is gonna happen just mm -hmm. have fun with it stay humble whatever happens happens keep living on stay take care of yourself good mental health and stuff like that just yeah man again don't think too much into it it's 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 a toy 
it's a game. It's going to get you mad. It's going to get you really, really hyped. Let it be what it is and what happens, happens. Heck yeah. Dude, that's what we like to hear. Uh, <laughs> it's all good words, man. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on the upcoming wedding. We wish you lots of luck on that day. Heck Enjoy yeah. it, savor it, and shred it on the dance floor, my friend. Of course. Oh, big dance. Yeah, I got to let loose. Dude, thank you so much for jumping on here. And we will catch you guys on next week's episode right here on The Review. Much love to everyone.